hope y'all had a good week, you know what I'm saying? Got a dope show for y'all tonight. Got the homie Hot Style Rhymes, you know what I mean? Shout out to all the sponsors, the Snow Goons, at least Sound International, Creative Juices Music, you know what I mean? Make sure to go cop the Snow Goons gear and shit from the website, you know what I mean? Go get the show poppin', man, shit's gonna be dope, you know what I mean? Got the fam Hot Style. It's going down. Hey, it's peace to everybody, you know what I mean? Yo, what's good? Salute, salute. What's, what's good, brother? It's been a minute. How you been? Been a minute, man. Just uh, keeping keeping hip hop alive, you know. You already know, man. We're how we get down. Multitasking, you know. Right. But uh, you and I got some history, so you already know the vibes. Mm -hmm. Yo, you know well, we're gonna be we're gonna be going in on on the joints we did together and whatnot. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Hell yeah. But uh, other than that, though, man, how's everything else still going with you? Everything's good, you know, just maintaining, man. You know, pushing uh, pushing this EP that's about to drop pretty soon with, um, with my man DJ Views over there. At, uh, or she's from Australia, but he's back and forth from Japan, you know, so I got the international promotion going, you know what I'm saying? Just dropped a video um, last week called Star Wars. So, you know, you could check that on YouTube that. and everything. Um, dope video, wow. man. It's just a throwback to, you know, back in the days when we had the movies like Crush Groove, uh, Star Wars, Wild Style, B Street, you know what I'm saying? Um, that mm -hmm. particular song is a throwback. But then at the same time, on that AP, you know, we have a uh, current uh, dialogue, like a song I got called Rap Report, talking about, you know, like just the current events, you know. Um, human beings being replaced by machines and, you know what I'm saying, GMO products in your food, you don't even know what to get no more, you know what I'm saying? You know, it's right. it's, it's, it's it's hard to live nowadays, so, you know, there's a war going on outside in the streets we ain't safe from, you know what I'm saying? So, um, right. you know, bringing Yo, exposure to Whatever product said that shit, bro, like back when I heard that, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Big it really didn't too. hit. Word, word. It didn't really hit back then as much as it does now. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, Ain't nothing yeah. safe now, man. You know what I mean? You breathe the fucking air. You got, <laughs> you're going to die. You touch something, you're going to die. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. this shit is wild. So, yeah, I'm glad you said that. I'm, I just wanted to add that in right quick. But, yeah, continue. My bad, yo. <laughs> oh, no no problem, man. And, um, you know, continually, like, promoting the album that uh I came out with um in uh last year called... um. Uh, Return to Earth, Knowledge Born. My man Supreme, he got a beat on there. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, me and Supreme go way back for the listeners that, um, or for the for the viewers that are watching right now. You know, we got we got a little bit of history. You know what I'm saying? When I once I heard his tracks, I was like, nah, we got to do something. You know what I'm saying? So um, right. he blessed me with a track uh, years ago for the song called The Shadows. Got a video. For the shadows too. Mm -hmm. Uh, check that on YouTube. You know what I'm saying? But um, yeah. bring you back up to speed though. You know, it's just that you know we're just like moving and shaking, trying to you know continually do music and uh, bring like you know consciousness to the masses. You know what I'm saying? You you won't really never see me do you know videos with the booty shaking and you know what I'm saying like all type of fifty guns in there. It's like that's not my style, man. High style is different. You know. Also, I gotta I gotta say yo. To this day, people still pronounce my name wrong. So it's like, you know, my name is Haas Style. You know what I'm saying? It's not Haas Style. It's not Ho Style. Nah. Haas Style. You know what I'm saying? For yeah, real. Yeah, you know, yeah. I, I, I was going to say, who, who, who gets that wrong, though? Like, <laughs> you <laughs> Yo, know what so I mean? People that, you know, they want to they wanna book a show or, you know, throw me on the flyer. Sometimes the name is all spelled wrong. But, um... Well, I told someone on the phone, and they try to, try to pronounce my name. Like, yeah, hairstyle, man. I'm like, chill. <laughs> Word. Maybe it's, the well, actually, Maybe it's the New York accent. I don't know. But, you know, I'm just letting the, yeah, for the yeah, viewers yeah. know. You know, it's just, it's not crazy. I'm just like, you know, if you're going to say my name, say it right. Word. Put it's that shit in caps. Almighty. <laughs> All caps. Put them all, put some more fucking respect on your name. I feel you. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Big shout well, uh, to Snow Goons too, and big shout to uh Creative Juices, man. Big shout to my man mm -hmm. um Ryan, you know what I'm saying? Uh ideology, 
You know what I'm saying? That's his uh that's his MC name, that's, yeah, that's B producer name. I got a couple beats from him on the um on my past album too. Uh Knowledge oh, yeah? on the Earth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh he oh, did a beat. Shit. I got a song called Get In Where You Fit In. Once you're fitting in, then they're oh. looking at you different. When they want money, then they're paying you a visit, mm -hmm. paying you attention when before they didn't listen. Caught up in the system. He did the beat for that. You know, it's in well, the, you know, um, what name what name did you put on there for the production for that one? What's up? On the, uh, on the track listing, uh, what was the uh, the name that you put on there for ID? Was it Shanty Gallows or did you put a different name? Oh, oh, uh, Ideology. Oh, okay. See, that's where I got confused because I'm like, yo, this man got so many names. It's like, <laughs> you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. He, he, he the RZA of hip hop out here. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know what to call this nigga at most of the time, yo. But word, shout out to the fam ID and the whole creative got a couple of man. aliases, like, AKAs, you know? But, um, word. All that fit in, fit in, though, was good, man. Brother. That was a dope ass track. Oh, good looking, yo. Good looking. And um, also, you know, so on our streaming services everywhere, so you can look that up. High style, get in where you fit in off the um, uh, Return to Earth Knowledge Born album. But, um, you know, I, I work with some dope producers like yourself, you know, like Ideology. I I've worked with a large, large professor just recently. You know, I've worked mm. with like um, producers like James Data, producers. Uh, my man Fred Munz is a producer too, but shot the TME Studios. Um, I've worked with uh, Evil D before, you know what I'm saying? Like, this, it's all in the camp. Uh, uh, Crazy DJ Bizarro, uh, DJ Sky, you know, uh, name him, uh, Finster Bundy, you know what I'm saying? He calls himself Ward G Jr. on a production tip. So, you know, a lot, a lot of people, a lot of flavors, you know, I try to keep it in the house, you know what I'm saying? And um, that's why people think I'm from Brooklyn, because I, I work with a lot of Brooklyn. I work with a lot of Brooklyn cats, but I'm a, I'm a Queens cat. F Flesh and Queens, let's go, you know what I'm saying? Jamaican Queens, but um, and that's how that's how you and I met. Uh, I think you, I met you performing of uh, upstate. Um, yeah, where, where I'm at, and, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Through uh, Joe Flo, you know what I'm saying, and, and DJ out King James. Big shout out to them, you know what I'm saying. DJ uh, King James was, and uh, Decaf was there too. Like, yeah, there was the whole family there. Bobby Glaze. Yeah, there. yeah, yeah. Shout yeah. out, shout out to my shout out to my hometown brothers. You know what I'm saying. That was yeah. that was a dope ass show, man. I remember. I think I just came off work. I strolled in. I think you was spinning. I'm like, yo, who this nigga spinning, son? Right? That's that I'm, I'm like, yo, I, I'm like, ah, yo, <laughs> like this dude is dope. You know what I mean? <laughs> and I think the first <laughs> thing that we started talking about originally was um, you and Joe Flo was gonna get on a joint and decaf with me. Yeah. Um, yeah. That yeah. Um, I know, I know they got a decaf. That me and you just, me and you just built from there, pretty much. Like, yeah. The original I'm, I'm glad you, you know, I appreciate you, you know, checking in on Hostile, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, it's, it's, it's a good thing to just, you know, continually like, um, you know, get creative with this music. You know what I'm saying? There's so many avenues that you could like venture down when it comes to this music. And, you know, it's never, it's, it, it, it doesn't stop, you know? Um, I used to think that like, you know, I wanted to do things at a certain age, like, nah, it's like, I I wanted like five albums when I was 20 years old, but, you know, I didn't realize, like, there was a, you know, a process to doing this, and you don't just, like, make it famous overnight, and even if you do, it's like, you know, we don't make that microwave music, we make music that lasts, like, forever, so, you know, you just can't, like, you know, just jump in and out, this is a whole process, you know what I mean? Um, You know, I, I know you've been doing your thing for a long time, too. You know, you even told me that you rhyme too, like, you know, at one time or another. So, you know, like, you yeah, might have well, to set up something. I'm not trying to blow my mans up, but, you know, I'm just you saying. No, know, mad people ask me that shit too. Got like, mad niggas want to be on their album. I'm just like, yeah, I, yeah. all y'all's a blessing. Like, if you be on the motherfucking mic, but you will be a blessing. I mean, um, I mean, if if, I, if it was able to happen, most doubt, bro, because I like your style. I like how you rap. I like your, your, your lyrics, and I like your substance. Your overall substance of how Thanks, you man. handle things Thanks. in hip hop. So, I definitely it would be a blessing. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, yeah, of course. We got a lot more music to do, man. It's like it's, you know, for some reason, like not to cut you off, but it's like it's it's weird. Like, I feel like you and I could have probably did like at least two albums already had it been for COVID. You know what I mean? Yeah, because yeah. like you know, like that stopped a lot of momentum when it came to doing music. Like I was, you know, like knocking out my demos in the crib, sending you like material. Like, like you like this? 
and, and, and my man Supreme, I, I big you up because you know you're pretty pretty much honest. Like, you know, I might have had like a couple songs where like some verses might not have matched a specific song. My man Supreme was like, nah, not this one. Use this for something else, but use the dopeness and uh, you you keep you kept me on track. So along with that, you know, after COVID, you know, it's like all the songs was there. It's just that it's it's about you know, fine tuning things, going back in the studio and 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 continuing the uh the momentum. So. Like I said, there's there's so much songs, there's so much music that you know, is 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 like ready to go and ready to be written. Like so many, I know you got mad fresh beats. You know what I'm saying? Even if your son does beats, <coughs> like, come on, yeah. man, it's like Word. so in the family, you know. No doubt, of course, of course, yeah. We, we could have got mad shit done, but like, yo, real real yeah. life, be fucking nigga shit up. You know what I mean? Cause it's just yeah, between the COVID and trying to travel, like all that shit. Ah, man. I mean, it's definitely worth it though. But yeah, yeah. I know, I know you know that travel up here. That shit was like at least probably three hours, right? Something like that, two, three hours. Yeah, yeah, so it's, like, yeah. It, it, it's a lot. Like that's that's like one of those type of things. Like anybody that's trying to collab like that from upstate to the middle yeah. of the city, it's like you it would have to be uh, like like a weekend type joint. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> you know, ain't nobody trying to drive that. home late in the night. You know, motherfucking traffic. <laughs> <laughs> you know the city, bro. Hell not. Nah. Say like, yo, yeah. that that shit would be wild, yo. Yeah, but, um, yeah. But we do it for the I'm... love. Yeah, no doubt. We no do it doubt. for the money too, but the love, you know, is there. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, the love brings the money. You know, the I mean, love, the love the brings the money. Exactly. Yo, no yo and um, your, your guests, you got some dope guests. Like, you know, shout to like I said, like Snow Goons. He, uh, Rusty Jukes was up there, like you know, ideology, like we was talking about. Um, who else you had? Uh, definitely, like a lot of people that I ran into and does show did shows with. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, big up to the show, man. I, I, I I'm, I'm, I'm only trying to see a show go up. You know, like you're gonna be interviewing like this dude Jada Kiss pretty soon, right? Unless did you ain't yeah, really you he he ain't get the interview yet, right? Nah, that yet. <laughs> <laughs> not yet. Not yet. Um, you know what it is, though, bro? I'm a prime. I'm a prime example of like what I'm yeah. what I represent in my philosophy. Because <clears throat> this whole shit was just random. What? This was not. This was not a pre-planned ordeal. It wasn't like, oh, today I'm just getting. It was like I did. I did some beat shit. I had randomly added in all oh, fucking um, J Royale. And we just went from there and started doing interviews and just adding people, hitting people up, you know what I mean? And everything yeah. just fell together. But this was all for the simple fact that I did it for the fun of it. Every interview was always for fun. I'm just 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 to just to clarify for everybody, I am not paying nobody. Ain't nobody getting paid to be on no show. Ain't nobody getting, you know what I mean? Ain't nobody bound down to nobody. It's all mutual respect because all of them, all the artists that have been on the show all either know me, have met me, and they all know we all vibe the same. Like, me and you, right. how we vibe. So it's like, I just want everybody to know that this show is all about fun. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, mm -hmm. we all try to have a good Going time. It's motherfucking, you know what I mean? Friday night, most niggas want to be out there popping, getting, doing this, 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 and that. If they yeah. tune in, it, that's a motherfucking blessing because they could easily be our party. So, exactly. you know what exactly. I mean? Yeah, yeah, exactly. But then they get, you oh, know, you get... You could get like you know a little dope interview by you know an artist that you're interested in that you know might not know like you know the background from, you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. So you know it's it's this the show is dope though. You know it gives the the artist an extension to be able to you know express themselves to where like you know mention things from back in the days that you know heads don't know about it. Like you know like little um like uh fun facts and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Because yeah. you know. I can't I can't turn down interviews, you know. I'm an interview dude. Yeah. And plus sure. it's a good promotion too, you know what I'm saying? Plus I get to see what you up to, you know, so on and so forth. So yeah, man. Oh yeah, it definitely I mean everything is gonna set in the way it's supposed to. Because you you already know how I operate, you know what I'm saying? Like, right, even right. if even if shit didn't pop up. Biggest skills, my man, biggest skills is in the building. I'm just looking at the list of who's up in the building right now. Oh yeah, peace. Yeah, yeah my uh, biggest hopping in is up in here. Um, it's all good, yo. It's, 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 still, it's still early. It's still early. It's still, most, it's, most, it's, most of the artists I know don't hop in until like 10, 10 o'clock, 9 30, 10 o'clock type shit. That make everybody be doing their own thing and shit. But um, 
So, so you better, anyway. we, I better start rhyming or something, give you a performance because I'm trying to get some hands up in here. Like, like I'm trying to get some traction because you know, this is important right here, man. This is special, kid. Word. You already know. We're going we to save that portion because I was going to ask you to spit the bars. But um, I want to save that action for more people coming in because of course, of course, uh, of course, I want I want them to to recognize your skill, and your, your talent. Um, but yeah. as of right now, because this is also going on YouTube and whatever other websites, creative uses websites and whatever um, Snowball's website. So this yeah. is going to be platform regardless. But <clears throat> what I recommend as of right now, so more people hop in, we just get right to the to the uh the basics. You know what I'm saying? The basics. Um. First off, I wanted to ask you, because I'm pretty sure it's pretty obvious, but fuck it. We're going to be spontaneous like that. So your your name, Hostile Rhymes, how did that come about? Hostile Rhymes. Um, started off in high school. Uh, I got an Arabic name, first of all. Uh, my name is Hassan, right? My last name is Johnson. So growing up in Queens back in the 70s and 80s, there was not a lot of Hassans out there. So, you know, um, my name was being chopped up crazy. It's way before I started rhyming. So, um, and I was going to Catholic school at that. So that's another story. So um, I'm like, you know, let me come up with a dope kind of name because, you know, rap has started. You know, I, I started listening to Big Daddy Kane's and, you, you know, your uh, um, your Cool Herks and, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Bismarckies and everybody had a dope name so I was like you know let me think like chop up my name Hassan I got my own style hostile yeah yeah I'm gonna call myself hostile and in the beginning I was like I, you know I had an extension of the name hostile the mellow one hostile the barber hostile this hostile that and then I noticed that other people started calling themselves hostile so I'm like nah let me just hostile rhymes you know what I mean and, and, and since then like then I was like in the early 90s it just stuck from there so i never i never changed it from that and it just fit my lifestyle you know what i'm saying it just fit me so uh yeah that's how to get that's how the name came about okay. high school that's a perfect that. that's that's dope first off man like that that's that's an ill concept i like i like it's to be a simple you know what i mean i'm not no i like the fact that you utilize such, not no big such and such this is hostile baby well i like yeah. how you are uh, you utilize your regular name too Kind of like Nas, like Nas here. He cut yeah, that's one of my favorites Nas too. Like, like so, yeah, like that. I was, dude. I was before this phone call. I was like, he gonna probably ask me how I got my name. I was just like, you know, vibing. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, yeah. I should tell him how I really like that. Like, that's a real story. But like, I grew up on Nas and, and stuff like that too. Like, be shot to large professor, main source, Queensbridge. Wow. My my parents are from Queensbridge, so um. And I and it's funny because I, I when I went to day camp out there in, in uh, out there in uh, River Park, uh, it was called Reese Day Camp near the near the near the um near the center where uh, um, MC Shan is talking about in the song. Um, you know the song, um, the bridge. The, the bridge. Oh, I'm about to say yeah. Yeah, there was a day camp over there, and 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 me and Nas was in the same day camp, but I didn't know him like that. So, and I obviously I didn't know he's gonna blow up. What? <laughs> we talking about like 10, 11 years old. He was a shorty with curly hair, and I didn't even know oh. his name. But as we grew up, because we we're in the same neighborhood, my 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 grandma's was living like two blocks over. So, um, you got the name Nas. His name is Nasir. My name is Hassan. They're both Arabic names. So he mm -hmm. he chopped his up like you know straight up Nas, but if you if you if you if you read it, it looks like Nas. Back in the days, people were mispronouncing his name, and so he came up with Nasty Nas. You know what I'm saying? So me the same thing. Like they see if I people call me Haas back in the days, but you know it's still a mispronunciation because of the way a person sees the word. So you bringing up Nas is is definitely su su suffice to the story because that's fucking uh, crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but you, this is, is natural, kid. You know, that's how you, that's, you, you, that's how you and I talk anyway. Like, this natural things come out, but you know, that's 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 the origin, you know what I'm saying? And I'm a big Queens head, so you know, you know, I'm a like, you know, I'm a like Nas, Mob D, you know, Cormega, mm -hmm. um, name them, LL Cool J, like, you know, I grew up on all that, you know, Run DMC, Hollis, big up to, you know. Hollis Queens, like Liberty, you know, Merrick Boulevard, all that. God Brewer, I'm a Queens dude. 
For real. This oh, Royal, Royal Flush, too. Big up to Royal Flush, too. So you see, that that's the type of shit I want for the show, too, man. <clears throat> that's why I always try to ask my artists, like, yo, do you have any background stories, something that people might yeah. not have heard, not see the light of day and shit? Yeah, man. like, people, fact, people <laughs> ask a lot of questions, like, yo, how do you know, like, Neat the Exotic, you know, Royal Flush, like, we're all from the same neighborhood. You know, where where um um I came up rhyming and I came up cutting hair. So if I didn't meet you kicking a verse for you, I met you probably giving you a half moon or giving you a design in your hair back in like I swear to you, like nineteen ninety one, ninety two, ninety three, that's when I really started cutting hair doing designs. And back then everybody got designs anyway, onyx signs and you know, yeah, Nike yeah. checks and all type of stuff. So I was that dude cutting hair, and that's how you meet a lot of people. I met Fat Joe, you know. I met um, Kooji Rap. I used to cut Kooji Rap's hair. I used to cut Lamar Odom's hair, um, MC oh, Shan's sh hair. Like I cut uh, Sadat X's hair. Like if we ain't rocking in the studio, I'm cutting your hair. Like dude, it's like that's how I got my rounds. And plus, um, I'm good with the pen as far as um, writing, but I'm good with the pen as far as drawing. So people would hit me up for logos back then too. Like I did a logo for Royal Flush before, you know, I did, I, I designed a uh, Nick the Exotics album cover for um, uh, uh, Hell Up in Queens. Like, you know, I, I still, I've been around, like I did a, a design cover for a Dysfunctional Families album that just came out called um, uh, Mixed Emotions Part 2. Like, yo, big shout to Bizarro too. Um, I've been around, so that's how I'm able to like, you know, bouncing between heads like i said you know uh big shout to evil d you know he knows the vibe like uh my man uh luck from mood doctors who's the brother of uh pasta news you know like it's like i might not talk about everybody i know because it's not necessary until i guess you know these moments where it's like yo who's who's hostile why is he so important like yeah i i got i got history with these heads you know what i mean mm -hmm. yeah, exactly <clears throat> that's it that's just crazy though man Cause, like the fact that you cut their hair, the fact that, you know what I'm saying? Yo, by the way, your art is fucking amazing, bro. Like, oh, thanks, For anybody yo. that needs some art and shit, you'll definitely hit them up. You know I mean? Go to, go to Hostile awesome. Art um, on Instagram, Hostile Art, if you want to see the artwork and stuff like that. You know, I got I got different, uh, I got I got multiple hats that I wear, but, um, you know. Yo, I have a question for you, though. Like, yeah. this, this might be a random question. It might have an answer, might not, but I think I'd ask it anyways. Nah, it's all, it's all good. My question to you is, since you're a barber and you're an artist, do you feel like barbers in general might also have the, the creativity to paint, do art? Because you have, cause you guys have to have very steady hands. You have to have very, yeah. uh, like, a lot of patience, and they have to have an open mind. So if you think right. about it, like, w what was that? So a so mightier than the pen, whatever. I mean, they both could be deadly, though, et cetera. Well, it's like that kind of scenario because yeah. you know, your hands is pinpoint with cutting people's hair. So you think barbers, like, like would, say, for instance, the people you work with, you think any of them are good at art like you because of that, that um, what do you call it? Just because the they're able to do that? Hmm. Um, that's a good question. Yeah, that's that's a perfect question for me, too, because... When I first started cutting hair, I didn't really want to cut hair. That's the, that's the, that's the, mm. let's first get to that. Like, mm. the reason why I started cutting hair is because my father at the time was like, um, I got two younger brothers and um, cash was low. So he started cutting our hair. And that was right before I started going to high school. So I wasn't really mm. trying to go to high school with a messed up cut. So long story <laughs> yeah, short, yeah. long story short, I learned how to cut my own hair um, in the basement. And um, mm. once my, my parents seen that I was pretty good at it, they suggested I, I get my barber's license. And I didn't think that I would be good, be, I didn't think I would be good at it. But then the person that trained me, big shout out to Marie Cook uh, from Marie's Miracles, she said, um, she's the first thing she said was, you're an artist, so mm. you should know better than anybody how to cut hair. And I'm like, how? I never cut hair before. She's like, you got an artist's mind. And there's a difference between like, you know, somebody just like, you know, trying to like put something together and somebody that has that vision and you got that vision, I'm gonna bring it out. 
So yeah. anybody that like would train me after that would have to have that vision. And um, so what you're saying about artists that have like, you know, a certain way of uh, conveying things through haircuts, they could probably paint because, you know, I do designs and it takes um, a certain mind to be able to put a design in someone's head that's curved. You know what I mean? Think of the curvatures of the person's skull. You know what I mean? How do you like hold your clip a certain way to be able to get around that everybody has different hair texture everybody has different skin texture so you know it, it takes a distinct still a uh, distinct skill to be able to do that and um you know to answer your question yeah, yeah I, i'm pretty sure that a lot of barbers are painters they are probably cartoonists sketchers like you know people that are good with like you know the pencil and um you know really 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 creative with it i'm pretty sure they are Word. I figured I'd ask like that because you'd be surprised. You'd be surprised how many people can mm -hmm. have one skill that, that's like almost the same as another skill, but they can't do that other skill. So it's like it's kind of, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? But like, you ever get you ever get a design? Nah, man, I, suck. In the day. <laughs> <laughs> I suck, bro. I'll leave professional shit to you because I can't fuck with this man over here. Let me tell y'all something. This man over here, hostile, be cutting designs in people's hair, bro. I don't know who. That is not. <laughs> I don't Instagram. think I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like I don't know who would say that's not the dopest fucking shit on the planet because you know what I mean. That shit is um fucking amazing. Like the fact that you have, like I said, patience, steady. You have to have a fucking yeah. surgeon's hand with that shit. Cause you fuck you up when you get some nigga so weird ass haircut in their hair. Somebody, somebody getting boxed out. <laughs> you. <laughs> Like, yo, man, it's the word. So that shit is that shit is crazy, man. But I always felt that because yo, I I cut, I I I do my own cuts here and there. Yeah. But I suck at I suck at fucking uh, <laughs> I suck at art. So that's why I figured I'd ask that. Like, do you feel like the <laughs> the percentage, <laughs> the percentage of barbers? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because like right. you know, it, and and also to piggyback on that. It's like you got to think of what a, a barber goes through to be able to just to be able to just cut your hair because you know people don't take care of their hair a lot. You know what I'm saying? You got wingworms, you got like lice, you got to deal with like you got to be official. Yeah. Like you know before before COVID, you know you needed to be official, you needed to be sterilized, and you're dealing with a lot. Like think about when uh, you know barbers cutting like a child's hair and how they can't keep still or they can't keep, you know, they can't stop crying. You still got to come out with a dope haircut because they somebody paying you to do that. So you, that's that's where all the patience comes from. But at the same time, you know, it's it's well worth it because, you know, people, I, I remember um, I didn't have a lot of money at one time back in the mid-90s. I was like mad broke. It was close to Christmas. And um, this customer came out of nowhere. She had the illest flat top. And I laced him up. And he's like, you know what? I'm going to bless you with a dope tip. Dude gave me like $200. $200. You know, m most of my tips back in the days or even now are like maybe $20, $25 the, the most. But And he wasn't no big rapper enough and no big star. He was just from the kind of kindness of his heart. And you do run into people like that, which makes it all, you know, worthwhile. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, <clears throat> big, big shots to all my barbers out there, yo. Well, with that being said, uh, you also feel like the benefits, or should I say the perks of doing the haircut, even though it could take hours, it could be the most frustrating thing ever, but do you feel like the perks and the benefits are the fact of knowing that you just made somebody's day with their haircut? You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, because uh, I always kind of um, compare barbering to bartending because um, it, they're basically the same. Like, you, you meet a stranger... They come for your service and, you know, in between them coming and going, you know, you're there to make them feel better about whatever they're going through. And some, some could be, you know, on the brink of jumping over a bridge, you know, jumping off a bridge. And mm -hmm. what you say during that haircut is like, yo, you know, you're going to be good. Don't worry about it. You know what I'm saying? Such and such, you know, just pray a little more and have faith in God, whatever, it, you know, it takes. Like, that's why a lot of, has say that barbers are, you know, um, like psychiatrists and, you know, they're mentors and all type of things. Like, 
it goes way back. You know, I came I came from I'm from the era where like, you know, you you respect the barber. The barber was like, you know, the barber shop is like a men's club, like you know what I'm saying? And and you get all the knowledge from going there, stuff that you can't really get, like, you know, just watching television. You know, you get like a lot of, you know, just heads up on things. And you get, you know, and you get some like bootleg DVDs and CDs or whatever they sell up in there. But you know, at the same <laughs> no time. It's just, yeah, man, it's it's like, you know, it, it like I said, it, it makes it all worthwhile because I, I didn't really sign up for that. But while while doing it and getting into it and meeting more people and people just talking to you, because people just talk to me, yo, they just like give me all their business. Like, I don't really ask, but they give it to me and, and they because I'm, I'm pretty much trustworthy. Like, you know, even you had something to tell me, I'm pretty sure I'm not posting that on social media. You know, don't get me wrong. You know, I do I do post a lot and I promote a lot. But when it comes to like, you know, things that are personal, um, you know, I, I know where to keep those gems. You know what I'm saying? As a barber, <clears throat> as a friend, you know, just as a regular human being. Yeah, nah, I feel you. I mean, I'm Same. glad you said that because that's how I felt like barbershops were for me when I had hair, <laughs> you know what I mean, et cetera. But, like, at the end of the day, like, it was kind of like like a man cave, you know what I mean? Like, everything goes. You can you can hear the hottest mixtapes you didn't know existed from a barbershop. Exactly. You can see the illest battles, freestyles right outside the fucking everything. shop. Everything. Like, you can, everything was at a barbershop. Like, I, and I feel like, you know what I'm saying? Like it is definitely different now. Yeah, it's a little, it's a little different. I mean, it's, uh, I mean, the COVID kind of made everyone scared to talk to people. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, oh, yeah. everything's airborne. This, this, and that. And it's like all of a sudden, everybody's like, nah, I don't want to talk. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Right. That's, that 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 definitely kind of sucks, especially in your line of work. If you want to talk to people, you want to be friendly, and just you know what I mean, make your day go a little faster. If they don't want to mm -hmm. talk because of COVID, it kind of drags the day along. Right, it does. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it made it made the world different. You know what I'm saying? So everybody's like reacting to it. You know, just from their perspective of where they're living. And um, you know, it's weird that you know it's like a hip hop interview, but we're talking about barbering. But I'm like well rounded type of dude, so it's, it all relates to each other because everything I do mm -hmm. has a connection with the next thing. Um it, it 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 was a burden. Let me let me give you like a fun gem. Um it was a burden for me in the beginning because um like uh I came out the military. I was in the Air Force uh for four years. I came out the military and I was trying to find myself as far as an MC because I was MCing way before the military. I was MCing in the military, but when you come out, you know you come home you sh you, you got to try to fill out hip hop where's hip hop at and where do i fit in there so it took me a minute and um i used uh hair cutting as a as a way to promote rapping which worked for a little bit i had a song called haircut commandments you know i was i was rocking it but still like you know coming up with dope lyrics but people were more interested in getting haircuts after that than hearing my lyrics so i'm like let me separate the two, like, you know what I'm saying? So let me just, like, do albums about me, aside from that haircutting thing, aside from, like, promoting uh, artwork, cartoon, cartooning, and just get, you know, lyrical with these heads. And um, I've got a much better response. Now, not, not that, like, you know, I gave a barber, and obviously it helps, you know, put twenty, forty, fifty, sixty dollars $60 in my pocket, you know, here and there, but you have to make the distinction. You know what I'm saying? Like, if I'm good at riding a bike and I could do tricks, I could make a rap album about it, but how far can you go? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I could be a skateboarder yeah. talking about skateboards, but then it's like, if I'm not selling skateboards, I'm just rapping, um, what, I'm, what am I doing? So um, now it's just strictly hostile, you know what I'm saying? And, and you know, with my music, I'm trying to get it. I'm try I, I take it back to the old school, but I, I fast forward to, to some futuristic stuff too. That's the distinction. Like, I don't try to stay in a box and just, like, you know, just rotate around that. There's so many angles of hip-hop that need to be explored that I'm trying to boldly go where no MC has gone before. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, I definitely agree with you. didn't really mean to, like, go too far in depth with the whole barber shit because, like, you know what I mean? It is time-consuming because I know we, you definitely got millions of stories and shit. And there's a, there's a whole mad bunch of stories. shit. Mad stories. I got mad. You know what I mean? Like I but said, the I reason... 
Oh, I used to bad, cut yo. so many heads. Like my my uncle uh, was a basketball scout, so my um he was popular back in the days. Actually, he grazed the front page of uh, Sports Illustrated back in nineteen, I think ninety four or something for for recruiting a few heads that you've known. Like he recruited, he got uh, Stephon Marbury recruited. You know what I'm oh, saying? Shit. Into the NBA, That's he great. was working with Ron Artest. He was working with Lamar Odom, you know what I'm saying, back in the heydays when he was working, when he was playing for the Clippers. You know what I'm saying? My, my Queensbridge has no about, you know, when Lamar Odom was playing for the Clippers doing his thing, then he went to the Lakers, won the championship ring. But um, I've seen all these heads, like, come and go. So, you know, it's, it's like, it, it humbles me, though, because it doesn't make me like, yo, I know such and such, yo, I could just call him right now. Nah, I mean, we're all human beings on the same level. You know, like I, I don't have millions of dollars, but I don't carry myself like I'm broke. You know, like it's yeah. it's a way of having this just a way of carrying yourself, you know what I mean? And like like you said, like not a lot of people even wanna talk to each other nowadays. You know, it's like hard to communicate with people that don't really wanna you know, just converse and just like have a regular conversation. And rapping is just basically communication also. So, you know, with me continuing to write, it's like just continually you know expressing myself to an audience that might not know me but you'll know me through the music and then it's up to you to look up these interviews on youtube and find out about the artists you know what i'm saying see that's what the show is all about it's like it's about <clears throat> it's about information about your current projects past projects etc but yeah. i kind of want to get deeper inside the artist though you know what i mean like, yeah, of like, course, like, of course. like like you know what I'm saying? No homo. <laughs> no homo. You know what I mean? Let's just put that at no homo. You know what I mean? But um, like I, I, I'd rather the artists tell them about themselves that people have not heard about. Or, you know what I'm saying? Stuff that, you know what I'm saying? Like, because I know I've seen a lot of interviews. I've seen how people conduct themselves. Yeah. Everybody's good. Everybody's amazing. But at the same time, I feel like when I watch as a fan, right. I feel like they're not breaking down the artists. Like, right. that I want, like, outside the music. I want to know about my artists outside of music. Like, what you yeah. do for yeah. your spare time. What you, you know what I mean? How you do this. How do you handle that? How's your life? Like, this, this is how I build with the artists, too, on this yeah. show. This and way like, I can... That's, that's, that's you know the I mean? about the, that, um, this type of, uh, you know, forum. Because, you know, um, I stay busy. You know what I mean? Like, I, I do a lot. I have mad pages everywhere on Instagram, on Twitter, uh, Facebook, you know, like, because cause I have different uh, sides to me, but they're all related to each other, you know, and um, I want to yeah. reach as many platforms as possible. Like, you know, like, I'm working on videos right now that, you know, I, I, I hope to work with, like, Steven Spielberg or George Lucas one day, because I'm that, sure. like, scientifically, futuristically thinking. You know what I'm saying, and and um, like I said, I stay I stay busy. I'm gonna tell you my schedule. Like for for, for those who don't know, I'm, I'm I got like three jobs. Like you know what I'm saying, I, I cut hair on the weekends. You know, I do security during the week. Um, I rest on the Sabbath. Like you know what I'm saying, and you know I got a wife. We've been married for like about almost 20 years now. So wow. she, she helps me out with a lot of things that I do as far as music is concerned too. She's the one that shot she's the one that shot my first videos when I was like trying to uh come up with like a visual aspect to these, you know, songs I'm writing. So, you know, she also has her a, a website. Like, you know, she she she's into fashion. Um her website is called fashion uh, um fashion. It's called uh, Fathias Collection, you know, dot com. Um I'm under HostileRhymes.com. She she designed the website for me. You know what I'm saying? She's a oh, graphic. Nice. <clears throat> Everything circulates around the family that is close knit. Like 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 you. You in the fam too. So, you know, um, I've done like um, graphic design for you before. I've done uh, like a, a graffiti. You know, I I, yeah. I I can't doing graffiti. So graffiti's already in me. It's like it's like second nature. So um, only I'm only saying that to say, like, I stay busy, but, you know, it's fun because, you know, all of us need a nine to five until we make it to that plateau to where uh, the art could speak for itself and the, and the art could pay our bills and the, and the art could send our kids to college. <clears throat> but until, like, you know, we have, like, some type of uh, 
social security plan, you know, when it comes to hip hop or retirement plan, then, you know, you're going to have to stay working. So, you know, that I'm always saying that to say, like, and I said this in another interview with uh, my man, um, uh, Cortland Hawkins, uh, um, the president, he calls himself the president of hip hop. Yo, you know, um, one day I'm pretty sure that we're going to be able to retire off of our music. But until we do that, like, like I said, we, we got to hustle. You know, but it's a good hustle. But you, you got to hustle. How are you going to make money? We live in we live in the USA. You know what I'm saying? You know, the land of the free, but, you know, the home of the slave. So it's like you, you got to continue. Well, I, you know what work. it is? I feel like this generation has just been working down, like, uh, on, the, on the knowledge side of things. You know what I mean? And at the same time, I feel like our 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 new weapon, uh, if you want to call it that, is, yeah. is just excuse. Excuse that to excuse. Like, oh, yeah. why am I broke? Oh, because I can't get a job. Did you even apply to a job? No. So it's what easy the fuck? <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like, this is, we're, we're brainwashed. You know what I mean? For mm -hmm. those who still watch TV and stuff. So we really don't know what we're supposed to be doing with ourselves right now. And right. for those that are, of us that are woke to what's going on, most of us are in hip hop. You want to be technical. Because yeah. this is our expression of our art, it's our expression of our lifestyle and what we do. So yeah. at the end of the day, we just need to like raise kids better. Like we need to be more informative with stuff and stop going off whatever's on TV. Even for the hip hop, like they got these loving hip hop shows, like completely ruining what we built. You know what I mean? From the ground up. You don't know nobody care about y'all beefing over who's sleeping with who. Don't nobody give a fuck, man. You know what I'm saying? We we trying to push culture. And y'all out here, you know what I'm saying? Like, that shit is, is, it needs to change. The game needs to change in this generation. Like, we need to stop being ignorant. And, you know what I mean? Wise the you, fuck up a little bit. You know how real that is, that what you just said? Like, okay. I'm going to have to break it down to you, yo. <laughs> Supreme. <laughs> All right, so before COVID, right, uh, in my building, uh, we work. We worked with a company called Big Fish Entertainment, right? Mm -hmm. Big Fish Entertainment. That's under uh, M MGM, I believe. Um, mm -hmm. The show Love and Hip Hop is under that company. So oh, I used to see like heads from Love and Hip Hop like almost every day and sign them in because, like I said, I'm a security guard. So like I, I see like uh, Joe Button, Remy Ma. Um, Papoose, uh, Fresher, uh, uh, Safari, all of them, uh, Faith, you know, uh, this dude, Stevie J, like, I, I've seen him before, but it's like, there's a difference between, like, what they show you on TV and how a person is in real life. So, you know, I, I as much as I respect them all, um, it's hard to respect the show because the show only puts like a dampen on like, you know, how people see us as artists, as black people, as Latino people, you know what I mean? It's, it's you know, the fighting and the throwing the drinks on each other. It's like, it's really repetitive, but like that's, that's mm -hmm. how America wants you to see us and how we act when it's, op it's, it's opposite of that. But, you know, that's how another way of control. That's that's a way how they can control how you see hip hop. So you know people might not want to invest in it, thinking that oh if I sh if I throw the show in his yacht, will people wild out bring guns? Like it's not like that. You know we're we're very intelligent mm -hmm. people, but you know these shows like Love and Hip Hop, like I said, doesn't really make us look like we're intelligent. You know, but it makes yeah, billions yeah. and billions of dollars and billions of views because also this is just about views it's about like you know staying on tv as long as you can before like you know these networks you know go out of style you know it's 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 weird like they you know i don't want to say it's coonery but that back in the days it's just like some sort of like you know it's kind of coonery you know what i'm saying but it's like i i don't really like the way they they portray hip-hop but it keeps the it keeps the it keeps the word hip hop in people's mouths, but at the same time, okay, you got like artists that just came out with an albums like um, Karis One, for example. He just came out with an album, right? My you, a lot of people might not know, but um, Mad Knowledge on there, um, um, 
it's like he's still the teacher. But you know, it's it's about advertising though. Who knows? Like you you you're gonna you'll find out about Kanye before you find out about, you know, other things like Kevin's one. Boom, twenty years ago it wasn't <clears throat> like that. But you know, like you said, you know, you do have these shows that like show you one thing when there's a whole lot of other things going on behind the scenes that you don't even see. And let me ask you, what's up with these albums that they were supposed to come out with? Because all I remember is K. Michelle coming out with an album and Cardi B coming out with an album. So what happened to everybody's album? Yeah, that's, that's a good question. That's for another show. <laughs> but you know, you know what? Just to leave it at the bottom line to the shit, I look at it like it's self-destructive. You know what I mean? Because you got us of color on shows like these and showcasing we're ignorant. Like, it's self-destructive. Yeah, they're making money, but it's self-destructive. The reason why I say that is it's like you, you try to sell drugs, but you sell drugs to your friend's mother or something. Like, yeah. you're, 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 destroying, you're destroying people. You're destroying families. Because oh, to be time. honest with you, like, to be honest with you, I feel like a lot of people watch that show and they take it very serious. And they actually yeah, try they to apply yeah. that shit into their real life. You know what I mean? They see it's these fine. rapid dudes cheating left to right, left to right. And that, so what do you think America's going to want to do? Let me be like these people. People, Let yeah. me go um, cheat on my, my wife. Let me go do this and that. Like, this is what <clears throat> they're doing to our culture. And that's why it's like... And, and who follows it faster than the kids? The kids, exactly, they, they, exactly. They, they see their, uh, you know, the person that they look up to. Um, these are their actions. They might want to carry out their actions because they might not have a distinct person that, you know, other than this person that they're looking up to. You know, and, and everybody, you, you can't really control a, a child's role models. Like, they're going to have certain role models until they grow up and they probably grow out of these certain role models. So, mm -hmm. you know, what if, uh, you know, you, you watching Love of Hip Hop or you watching some of these shows where, you know, and it, it's not even just Love of Hip Hop. You had Mob Wives and at one time. You had uh, Basketball Wives and things like that. You know, they might see it. They might idolize these things. They might think a relationship is, is just about that. When it's not about that, but these that's that's the poison that they 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 sell to you know the the audience of the TV watches. You know what I mean? That reminds me of a Nas song actually. Remember the Nas song called Poison? This is poison. Uh, this is poison. I, I don't remember the, all the words, but it reminds me because it's just it's just visual poison that's like infecting your mind, or infecting the kids too. And they thinking that it's real, and it's 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 not the realest thing that you ever seen, man. It's not real. It's it's, it's, not it's, real it's, it's mostly fake, man. Because I went, I've been in crowds for some of them type of joints, and yeah. it's all a lot of it is fake. It's falsified. They just, you know, what I mean, they just throw stuff out there because ain't nobody gonna watch no wholesome family on TV. You know what I'm saying? Like ain't nobody wanna watch that. They wanna watch drama. They wanna see drama. That's what they want to hip hop too. We start talking yeah. that positive shit, like what you do with a lot of your records. You speak a lot of positivity, and you're very precise with your words and what you say. And it hits a certain way too. You know what I mean? It's very knowledgeable. Yeah. So, but with that being said, it's like it's just it's just <laughs> it's just it comes corrupted, with responsibility. Man. You can't just make music and not expect people not to follow your lead when it comes to that. So you. Mm -hmm should yeah. set a good example and lead a certain way. So are, are you leading people to the fire or are you leading people to the water? You know what I mean? Like, okay, are you leading people down fast food or are you leading people down to fruit and vegetables? Like, you know, there's, there's, a, there's a distinct difference. Like, but, uh, you know... I mean, they even got, like, applause, applause fucking signs and all this other shit for those that's ever been to, like, reality shows and how they handle shit. No fucking throw a drink in each other's face. I, I don't know if you've seen this, I'm I'm just, I'm hoping you probably did, but I'm pretty sure they be throwing drinks in each other's faces, right? Cut scene, everybody shaking hands, everybody patting each other on the back type shit. <laughs> I Yo. mean You already know. Yeah, <laughs> see, see, that's why I had to ask that, because I know, man. That's why a lot of people are so brainwashed, bro. Like, you know what I mean? I, I don't be like, oh my god, she did what? She pulled a knife on her and then it's a fake knife. Or, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's Prop City up in the motherfucking shows, bro. Like, I, I already know. And I know you probably couldn't really speak on it because you, you probably still work and whatnot for them and stuff, I like, guess, as a, a security guard. But, 
Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a different vibe in the building now because you know uh, the percentage of workers that are in the building now are like nowhere close to where it was before. We're talking about like three percent as opposed to eighty percent. So what I'm saying now is it's like up in the air. It's not gonna affect nobody. But you know, <clears throat> to be honest, to be honest with you, a person can see that shows like these. Now, how you get them camera angles? Like, somebody, <laughs> should, like, come on. How you get them camera angles? You got three cameras, and, and, and you see the bodyguards come out when things get crazy. So, but you know they're already ready on the side. Yeah. Like, like okay. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's like shooting a, it's like, it's like shooting a movie, and people, and, you know, bystanders think it's a, think it's real when it's not. Because they got props out. And so, like, people says cut, and it's like, oh, this was a movie. It's just, dude, it's the same thing. Like, you know, like, even, like, okay, Flavor of Love. Now, I, I, I like I like Flavor of Flav. You know, I like Public Enemy. But when it comes to even Flavor of Love taking it back, you know, that was all staged. Like, come on, man. Are you serious? Word. And, and it, no one's, they're not going to put these TV shows <laughs> on TV if they think that it's a risk to the viewer because you have large networks that are relying on certain TV shows to bank. So they're not going to try to get that bag off of something that's not official. So, yeah, you, you already Yo, know. I consider, I consider this, this newer fucking show to me more like um, like the new generation of wrestling. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. I'm pretty sure a lot of these, from what I noticed too, a lot of these shows, they actually have writers from WWE come in wow. and choreograph the whole shit. So it's like, it's, it's kind of crazy. Yeah, Man. you'd be surprised. I mean, because a lot of people don't really check the credits and shit. You know what I mean? Because no one got time for that shit. But if you watch the credits, you, you'll know there's a whole bunch, bunch of shit going on in there. Even producers that you didn't even know were producing in the shit. Like for music and stuff like that. And uh, soundtracks and all types of shit you find when you watch the credits. But yeah, a lot Even of it is. days, though, um, Supreme, where everything's being exposed anyway. So, mm -hmm. you know, because people have cell phones, people could record things, you know, people could be getting in places where they're not supposed to and, and upload it and all of a sudden it's on YouTube and get like 5,000, 2 million views off of like something that wasn't supposed to be seen because people are more self-conscious and people, there's, there's ways of exposing things more. So you can't fool, you can't fool us no more. Like, you know what I mean? Like the, the revolution is televised now, you know what I mean? Back in the days it wasn't televised, now it's televised. Everything's televised. Word. Everything is streamed. Everything is about views and, and comments and, you know, how you feel about this or that. You know, that's how, like, podcasts are created. So there's ways of finding out the, 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 the truth now way more faster than it was 20, 30 years ago. So what you're saying is definitely valid. You know what I mean? So you can't really have shows that live on these type of legs that are fake because the legs are going to be taken from under them in the days that we're living at now. I mean, it's, it's self-destructive. Like I said, it's, it's destroying our community, not just the world, but also inside our little circle. You know what I mean? Blacks, yeah. Latinos, like we have a, I mean, we might seem like we're growing kind of quick and we get in there, but at mm -hmm. the end of the day, we still a tight circle. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And when you see us on TV destroying ourselves, destroying our families, destroying our kids That's on TV. Diamonds. I see him in the building. Not to cut you off, I'm big. Give my man shout oh, yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. Wait, yeah I see the penny music. I see you. But like, yo, it's crazy. It's crazy. It's like at the end of the day, it's like we don't need that. We need more positive influence, such as yourself. Like I said, for those who hey. listen to your music, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like, you're very positive in what you you say, what you write. As well as I was trying to say earlier, like you're you're very strong-minded with the shit. We need more writers like you. That That's just how I look at it. We need more writers like you. I appreciate that, Joe, because I, 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 I get that and I don't get that. You know, it's, it's like 50-50 because, you know, what's really popular is people like, you know, talking about, you know, guns, violence. I hit that, you know what I'm saying? Wearing no a condom, like, you know, I jumped off this bridge and, you know, I, I was I was on pills, but, you know, it's... it's, it's the, the weirder it is, the more... The, the more, you know, it sells for some reason. Like, you know, like, I don't, I don't really want to mention too many MCs, I, you know, that I, that, that I listen to now. Um, cause I'm, I don't mean no disrespect, but it's like, 
what are they really talking about? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, what's really popular is, you know, stuff that really you can't, you know, add up two and two together. It's like, why? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's, but at the same time, you have, like, MCs like Talib Kweli and you got Mos Def and you got uh, Black Thought. Like, me and my peoples at work always talk about, like, the, the, the illest MCs that we really listen to. They're still doing it, but they're not in the forefront. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, I can't say that all the time because, you know, you do have Nas that just came out with an album not so long ago. You had uh, Eminem came out with, you know, an album. Um, Busta Rhymes came out with an album. Uh, big shout out to them, leaders of the new school. Big shout out to Dink O.D. You know, rest in peace to uh, Shamelo D. Um, I, I was close to him. He's part of the uh, leaders of the new school. But I'm only saying this to say that um, it's like the content is not there. But, you know, the the energy is there, but the content is there. Because if you look at the award shows, be honest with me, most of these award shows, I'm really not knowing who's nominated. Like, and people that win, it's like, why do they win? Like, you know what I'm saying? But, like, you know, I'm, it's not a hate thing. It's just that, you know, I grew up on it in a time where, like, hip-hop and, and, and rap music uh, was represented by, like, you know, large figures that really like knew how to write rhymes, write stories, you know what I mean? Like we 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 cut from that type of cloth. So, you know, well, all that shit is rich. You know what I mean? Them 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 award shows, video shows, all that shit, that is fucking rich. Because like, it, it, it was it, awards, you got the end you know what it was saying, B T awards, you got the source awards or even that shit. Awards. Even that shit is rich, bro. Because no nobody in in that industry wants to hear, they don't want to hear positive influence. They don't want to hear a positive speaking MC. So at the end of the day, you know what I'm saying? They're going to ban that from happening, and they're just going to throw in whoever's the most popular at that point. So it's like, even, like I said, even BET, they're going to pick the most popping. Even if they're not the most influential, they're going to pick that person because it's going to help sell that show. And that's how yeah, it is. Right, right, like, like. Like you got you know Trey songs Tyler the Creator you know he they're finally like listening to Tyler the Creator so on and so forth you know you you got heads that put out good music you know what I mean it's just that I don't think that you know it's it's on a big enough platform you know what I mean like hip hop has been through some stuff within the past few years like like look at like like for example like you got Little Nas X that's winning like mad awards, you know what I mean? But you know, he's on a different, way different type of vibe than what we're bro, used to. Yeah. Now it's like we're yeah, not hating on it. Planet, it's just bro. like that's that's a that's a totally different, like, you know what I mean? But I mean, like is, I said, man, if, if MCs are gay, they're gay, bro. Because like, you know what I mean? Like I don't like I don't go by what the whole gender and all this, like, you know what I'm saying? I, I got a lot of gay friends. I got like I'm cool with everybody. And I look at it like yeah. it's not so much that he he's gay. It's just how he's handling shit. Think, it's yeah. like, you know what I mean? Like, that's, it's not, I don't want anyone getting that wrong. It's not because he's gay. If he is gay, I don't really know what to do with I don't, you know what I mean? I don't give a fuck, but yeah, that's, it's that's, just that's, the that's fact. Straight up and You down. can't say you're hip hop and then you out here claiming you're pregnant as a dude. Like, it's just, I'm sorry. It just don't work. It don't matter what planet you from, no matter what gender, race, it don't work. You look silly as fuck. I don't care. Like, yes, that's, that's not what we need in hip hop right now. So yeah, we are taking a loss with dudes like these doing dumb shit like that, them, them type of stunts. You know what I'm saying? That's yeah. why. That's why another reason why a lot of people are considering Kanye West to be crazy for a lot of reasons right, because right, right. Uh, they look by at the it way his documentary at, is dope. Like uh, we we just finished watching it on Netflix. You know what I'm saying? It's pretty dope. But um, you know he he does have his moments where it's like you know it's kind of hit and miss, but. If you really look at like how his first few albums sounded though, so it's like yeah, he he let's 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 just say that if we could like focus on those like those lyrics, those albums, like that create that creative mode, then it's like I could I could I could kinda like zone out, you know, like I no disrespect to Donda. I, I really haven't gotten into it, but I mean it's hard to it's hard to let go of the college dropout. It's hard to let go of late registration. It's hard to let go of, of like graduation. And, and you know what I'm saying? Like it's it's like when I listen to Nas albums, you have a few certain Nas albums that you just like, nah, I can't let this go. Like I know I like the new stuff, but you know the lost tapes, like you know what I mean, Illmatic, like you know. Lost tapes, 
you know like that's that's just where we're at like you know so like bringing it up to speed with like you know the, the new artists like Migos and you know what I mean like just the, the all the lils out there like the little MCs that's why I call them like this they, they ain't all bad like you still got Lil Wayne out there but Lil Wayne is considered to be a a, a, a elder now like you know what I'm saying? that's that's this crazy thing about it like when it comes to music music it seems like it reinvents itself every five years but see if you've been into this for 20 years you've seen like five versions of it are you gonna hate on it Nah, you're just gonna roll with it like you know because it's, it's it's evolving and that's what i like about rap hip-hop you know like the the elements of hip-hop you know like the b-boying the, the the djing aspect of it the graffiti you know aspect of it the you know just the clothes like it's something that's always going to be in us because, you know, we, we were cut from that type of cloth, like I said before. You don't have to, like, you know, everybody has their own opinion. You know what I'm saying? I want to I want to know if, like, I want to know where he got the fucking idea to, to use to use little Nas. Like, you know what I mean? Like, because, honestly, when I first heard that name, bro, I'm auto, I was automatically thinking he was Nas' son. Aside. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like that was kind of... A lot of people kind of blatant that. disrespect to the elder. You know what I'm saying? You can't. That's like me calling myself Lil KRS, and then I rap. So I do some weird shit. You know what I'm <laughs> saying? Like you're kind of you're, you're you're pushing your boundaries here. Like we understand you're rap, you're not hip hop. But for God's sake, man, can y'all stick to your genre or whatever it is, and, and let us have our shit? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. it's not that complicated. Y'all want to make your motherfucking money? Do you? Do your own commercial shit. Stay in your motherfucking lane. Let us do our hip hop shit. Bring back the B boys. Bring back the DJ battles, the juice type shit. You know what I mean? Like we need the, I, the you know me, you know me, bro. And I told you from the jump, I'm as hip hop as can be. Like I still motherfucking freestyle the cipher anywhere. So it's like we need that shit. It's been killed out because everyone thinks that shit ain't cool. I don't give a fuck if you real hip hop. That shit is cool. Watching yeah. a nigga pop and lock in the middle of the street. That shit is cool. Like that's. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's part of the element. Like, like, hip, hip, like, like this whole thing about hip hop, man. It's like martial arts. You know what I'm saying? Martial arts ain't just about the, you know, the way you form your fist and the way you kick. It's about, you know, this up here. It's about like how you move, how you carry yourself. You know, it's about how you express yourself, how you talk, your facial expressions. Like, it's all of that. That's what hip hop is. It's it's like a religion. You know what I mean? Yep. It's it's an unsaid religion uh, and. Even the dopest thing about it, we're, they're about to have a, a museum. Uh, they're building a museum for hip hop that's going to open up, and I think in a couple, two uh, by two years, two thousand twenty-four. Like that's, <clears throat> that's that's how much I'm into it. Like I'm looking towards the future of how like it's going to evolve because it's forever evolving. Like any music that we come up with, you know, it evolves, and 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 once it gets commercialized, then people think it's dead. It's not. It's not dead. It's just way you're looking for it. That's all you it know is. What? You know? With that whole hip hop museum, what you just said, um, my thing is about that is I would want to know who's the one opening it. Who's the one yeah. sponsoring it? Because <clears throat> yeah, we could I like hearing that is amazing. Hip hop mm -hmm. museum. But here's where it gets salty because it's mm -hmm. like we're gonna have yeah, we're gonna have our hip hop niggas in there. But right. guess what's gonna happen right after that? Here comes Post Malone. Here comes Little Crackhead. Who? Here comes, like, they're going to be in the hip-hop museum. That's like, what the fuck? Like, I, I don't yeah. want that to happen. If it's in a hip-hop museum, right, right, right. Let, let KRS-One be the one to sponsor. Let KRS-One be the one to, to hand-pick out the MCs yeah. that should be in there. Don't let it <laughs> – don't do like everybody else does, you know. We're just – we're going to throw everybody that said, has hip-hop in their name. We're going to just throw them in there because it's like – it yeah. defeats the purpose. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah, like opening right. the NBA Hall of Fame and you just throw any player up in there just because it's going to sell. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah, that's a good point. It is. You you want to make sure that it's in it's in good hands. You know, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the hands of the people that um know what it's about and know where it came from and know where it could where it could go. You know, and pay homage to the right people. You know, it's that's that's a good point. That's a good point. That's going to be tricky. I mean, I figured someone like Jay Z would be the one to do it. I mean, he did. Well, he bought out the Brooklyn, um, <clears throat> Brooklyn Nets. So it's like, you know, what I mean. So mm, why not? Why, why not? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So why not have someone like him or 
Nas invest in something like that. At least this way we know what we're getting. We're not going to go pay $100 to go into a hip-hop museum, and the first mm -hmm. thing you see at the fucking door is Lil Nas. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> give, give us some idea of what the fuck we're walking into at least. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What heard? Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah. That's funny. But yeah, let's, <laughs> but yeah, let's, uh, let's get back to the other shit, though, because we got way <laughs> off topic. I mean, it was dope, though. I, I appreciate building with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, um, yeah, yeah. We, we, try, we try to let people know about your skill set. You know what I'm saying? Because as an MC, cause you're, everyone that knows you probably mostly knows you probably at the barbershop, <clears throat> the, the graphic design and shit, but graphic you're design. an artist. You're an artist. Right. At the end of the day, you 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 doing what other artists can't. Like, you know what I mean? You're pushing a positive vibe, a message. You got bars. You got flow. You got substance. And plus, you know how to pick beats. You know what I mean? For those who listen to your, your catalogs and your music, you know how to pick beats. Honestly, that's the other thing, problem I think is wrong with hip-hop now is everybody's so eager to hop on any fucking beat just to make money. It don't work yeah. that way. And yeah, you no, pick... No. You pick the perfect beats for your style. And that's why we 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 tight. Because if you wasn't feeling the beat, you'd be like, I, I ain't feeling that shit. <laughs> and vice versa. Like, what it is with me and you, I'd be like, nah, I'm not feeling that flow, bro. We got to go back and just try to figure some shit out. Like, that's right, that's right, the type right. of vibe producers and artists should have. Yeah, I remember you telling me that there was a time where uh, I was picking beats that you didn't expect me to pick because other people weren't fucking with them beats. And... Uh, you know, I laced them beats because, like, I could just jump. I could jump on any beat I have before. Like, you've heard, you haven't heard like a lot of songs that I might not have released because I was practicing on a beat before I picked a, a certain beat that really fit my flow. But that's what I try to bring to the masses because I go through them times where I'm, I'm rhyming on it just about anything because you know it's it's just testing my skill out. And it's when you when you write a rhyme. <clears throat> You test the sword skill. sharp, yo. You know, you want to be as sharp as possible. There's so many types of beats out there. There's, there's thousands of ways to rhyme. So, you know, I, I want to be able to, you know, be able to master that. So basically, like, you know, I, I appreciate the fact that you could say that, you know, I, I choose pretty good beats because, you know, it's not easy. Man. It, you're not, oh, you don't always know what a person's going to like. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, true, true. Well, like, like for instance, that shadow. For those that haven't checked that video outside, you so you'll say we got the song out and shit. But <clears throat> we're touching subject with that shit. The Shadows beat, I ain't think anyone's ever gonna rock that because I'm sitting really? here listening to it and I'm like, yo, this shit's so motherfucking fire. But yeah, it's too fun. okay. It, it, it's so unique though, it's like who can spit on this shit. So when it's I said that to you spookiness to it. That's why I called it that. Like I called it the shadows. Mm -hmm. I mean, okay, big well, big up to uh I gotta big up my um one of my uh, good friends that I grew up with back in the days that started me with ramen. Uh, his name is Mike One. So I got the idea from Mike One back in the days uh, to do a song, because he did a song called The Shadows before. Totally different um, subject matter. My, my version is about uh, kind of like Common Sense when he had the song I Used to Love Her. When I, had, when I listened to the beat, it reminded me of the song I used to love her, but, but on a different type of vibe. It had a spookiness to it. It was like, yo, this, this sounds eerie, but I'm going to flip it, and, and, and I'm going to make it to where like I'm talking about a female, but she's hip-hop, but in the, in the 2020 era. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Basically, <clears throat> I'm listening to songs on the radio, and it's like, damn, I'm reminded of hip-hop, but it ain't really her, but it is her, but it's not. Damn, she in the shadows, though. You know what I'm saying? And that's where the terminology for me came from. So, like I said, when I when I listened to my man Supreme's beat, I was like, nah, son. I definitely got to do something with this. And that prompted me to do the video for it, too. So, you know, and the video came out pretty good. I wish you was in it, but, you know, there'll, there'll yeah. be other videos. But, um, yeah, yeah, I was man. kicking myself on the fucking ass, bro. I'm like, God damn. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? You like, I, even... Even with the barber shit, not to go right back to it like that, but when we talked about that shit, I was like, yo, this nigga is mad nice with the clip, man. Like, I'd, I'd love to get a haircut from you or a yo, beard trim or something. But then when I was like, yeah, this nigga's only way really Queens. I, did, I, like, yeah, yeah, I remember that. I did a song called you know Razor Bumps. Do you remember the song called Razor, Razor Bumps I did? Anyone, anyone watching this, go, go to YouTube 
and type in hostile, H-A-S-T-Y-L-E, and Configure Beats. Big shout to Configure. Uh, overseas, my man, Configure. He did a, he, he working with uh, Rest of Development and everybody right now. We did a song called Razor Bumps back in the days. Um, and it was hilarious, yo. Like, I wanted to put the aspect of uh, the customer getting the cut and then getting messed up and he got a blind date to go to. So imagine that. <laughs> yo. But uh yeah, man. That's just I, put, I put the person up. Well, I'm only saying that to say I put uh, I put different personalities in different songs. So on your on your track, you know, I had a certain personality. I did the song uh according to me, uh featuring um my man Bigger Skills. Uh, big shout to him and and Sadat X is on Sadat there. X. Sadat X. I had to I had to get Sadat X on there. You know, Yo, I'm not, this I'm not man gonna got a collab that. with Sadat X, man. Like. What? Yeah, go motherfucking yo. Matter of fact, yo, if you want to leave this motherfucking video, go ahead, but go check that fucking video. <laughs> go check the albums, man, and the fucking yeah, shadows man. video, man. I'm telling yeah, you. Yeah, my last my last album, Return to Earth, Knowledge Born. I got a song with he's not rhyming on it, but uh with uh Large Professor's beat. That that yeah. song is called Act Like You Know. I got, I'm working with uh um I did a song called The Realness with my man DJ Sky. Uh, he works with uh, Black Moon. Big shout to uh, um, Beat Miners. Um, and Supreme Almighty did a song. Bigger Skills is on there. And Sadat X. And Sadat X, yep. he, went, he went wild. He's a wild cowboy on there. Oh, wow. yeah. He went more fucking live on that shit. Like, oh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> I couldn't even tell it was Sadat X at first because I was just like, yo, all right, damn. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, you must have called him on a good day. You know what I'm saying? Word. <laughs> <laughs> that shit was fire, man. But yo, all the shit you've ever sent me, you know what I'm saying? You recorded now was fucking fire. So it was like, yo, I appreciate that, man. Oh, man. Um, and I'm, I'm working, like I said, uh, I got an EP coming out um, with DJ Views called Star Wars. And uh, that's dropping soon. We got a couple of more videos coming out after that. But after that, directly <laughs> after that EP, I'm coming out with a continuation of Return to Earth from last year. The continuation is this year, um, and that's called Hostile Enterprise. And on Hostile Enterprise, I'm opening up with one of your beats. So you oh, got to count. The, you got to count the next album because I'm opening up on the beat you did for the title cut, Return to Earth. Supreme Almighty nice. did that beat. Big shout to him. I need a clip from this video to even probably introduce that. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, you you did your thing on that beat. And um I think I end I end my album with your beat too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I think so. Um I think so. But dude, you have a okay, like, you know, not to switch up the interview and, and talk about you, but I wanna know how long you've been doing beats and what's your favorite piece of equipment to do beats on? <clears throat> um I've been doing it for about 26 years. 26 years I've been doing making beats. And um, <clears throat> I originally hit <laughs> See, I got stories too, but you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I got stories too, but you know what I'm Come on, you got to let I don't know. Radical. I don't know who remembers the PlayStation 2 joint, the music generator by Funk Flex, mm -hmm. but that's how I started making my beats originally. Word. Before that was a Casio P, uh, piano where you could do the little couple second loop or whatever it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shit. But my first joint was the PlayStation 2, where people used to hear my beats like, what the fuck? Like, how you making beats on the PlayStation? Like, it's an NPC. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, I don't fucking know. You know what I'm saying? Like, it just happened. And then from there, transition to FL Studio, NPC beats, NPCs. You know what I'm saying? So, I'm not thinking it's FL Studio. Right now. You was looking for the right sound, right? Out of like the, those pieces of equipment. Uh, I mean, all of them. I mean, I feel like it's just creativity. It's you. Yeah. It doesn't matter what device you use, as long as there's some quality to it, you can do whatever you yeah, want with yeah. any any program, yeah. any uh, machine. For me, it's just more so. I like I like to have a easier workflow. As a producer, mm -hmm. that that's very important because if your workflow is all over the place and you don't have time frames and you don't have things set up a certain way. It could kill your vibe. It could kill your creativity. So right, me right. personally, if it's with easier workflow, the easier it is for me to conduct and not have to worry about shit. So mm -hmm. um, 
the NFL Studio City is very convenient and it allows you to be yourself at the same time. You know what I mean, but um, that's mainly my thing. But it, I was rapping before I made beats. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I, I love the I love rapping, bro. Like, I mean, I'm not the best in the world today, and I got some joints <laughs> that probably never gonna see the light of day. But like, I love fucking. I love how people rap. Like I said, like this. This you, this mm-hmm. static, ecap. I got a whole bunch of artists that I work with. Just and you guys are fucking amazing, man. As MCs, <laughs> like I said, I'm very honest with my shit. Yeah, if I ain't yeah. like your shit, I'm gonna tell you. You know what I mean? I'm gonna be like, yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah. You. So at the end of the day, I like, I like that like, transparent. I mean, I, I gotta be. A lot of people take it the wrong way. A lot of people think I'm an asshole or something, but it's not <laughs> really not that. It's just I gotta be the big brother sometimes, and not not right, to say right, like right. that in a disrespectful manner. So it's more so you gotta be the big brother. Like, listen, this is what I feel needs to happen. You should try this. Like, try to like guide in some ways from my vision. I mean, everyone's got their own vision. I respect the MC's vision. So whatever right. you come up with, I'm gonna listen to it and give you my feedback. But mm-hmm. um. I love the conceptual um, hip hop, like Shadows. I love all the joints you did as conceptual. Return to Earth, honestly, that was one of my favorite fucking beats. A word? I didn't know that. Yep, that is one yep. of my when favorite I heard that beats. Beat, when I heard that beat, the first thing I thought of, yo, I'm going to be honest with you, because you honest dude. First thing I thought of was, uh, was Star Trek. You know, yeah. the intro <laughs> to Star Trek. I was like, this dude, they, cause you like if anybody hears this when when people hear this beat, it has like a it has like a uh, it has like a harmonizing thing going on in the back. Like, son, it's just like I I was like, yo, nah, this beat is so futuristically. I'm going on a journey somewhere, and I don't know if I'm gonna be safe coming back. Type of shit. Because that's how I think. When I listen to beats, you know, my mind starts going like, yo, okay, how can I get creative? What's the story behind, you know, this beat? You know what I'm saying? Like, I tried to jump in your head to find out what you was thinking while you was making the beat. So it could do, because the way it's mad chunky. So I'm like, nah, nah, I got to really like come up with something conceptual. Because you you know me, I I could do songs about myself and how good I rhyme or, you know, whatever I go through on a regular day basis. But, you know, certain beats bring out that story, you know, and I and I grew up on, like, Slick Rick, you know, and like I said, I grew up on, like, Nas and all the ill storytellers that, you know, you can even think of, you know, Coochie Rap, too. So <clears throat> if I'm a, if I'm going to contribute to this hip-hop thing and, and write songs, I got to write songs that mean something. I can't just be, like, you know, just like wasting time, you know what I'm saying? People are trying to buy this music. I'm not trying to like waste your money either. So if you get a, if you cop a song from me, you're going to get some type of lesson, lesson. You're going to like, you're going to, you're going to be entertained. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So that's, that's what I really try to go for when I try to make music. And I really do appreciate them beats, kid. You know what I'm saying? And, and God forbid, though, we're going to get paid from this. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm trying to like work as hard as I can. For us to get paid, because you you should be getting paid top quality money for your tracks, because your tracks is like on point, son. They've been I on point, I, and then we met. How long we know each other for? Like at least like probably eight years, six years, something like that. I don't know, yeah, but you know, dude, you got a good, you got a good track record. There's nothing that you've ever really sent me that sounded boring. You know what I'm saying? So. Yeah, and, and, and I mean, I, I might not been able to rhyme on all the beats, but I'm telling you, like them for the majority, you got some, you got some bangers, huh? Yeah, you got that real p- premiere, like you got the premiere, uh, Pete Rock style, like Kanye West a little bit on the first few type of beats he was making, type of style, like you, you know how to chop beats. Word. Yo, I mean, I put I put my heart into my beats. I put my heart into everything I do. A million percent goes into everything I do. Yeah, you know, dude, I'm telling you, we're gonna do an album together. Yeah, because like right now, I, mean, I might have like one or two beats on my albums of yours, but now nah, we we're gonna do a whole joint together. I'm already saying it. Yo, we go, we go, we go, we gonna do a little <laughs> quick promo though. You know what I mean? Yeah. You also got a joint coming out that we gonna put together with my son, Superb Dynasty. Mm. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's gonna yeah, be crazy. Let me tell you. Yeah, he's he's excited about that because he loves listening to your music and stuff. Awesome. Oh, that's what's so up. He, that's what's up. So when How he was like, now? yeah, he's fifteen. My, wow. my others, both, both my sons is 15. They both made beats. We're actually forming a group called the Dynasty Brothers. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> trademark. Mm -hmm. In case niggas want to try something. You know what I mean? Cause you know how <laughs> internet <laughs> niggas is. <laughs> the trademark. <laughs> both, like, it's a three-man team. Me and my two sons. The twins. So they're producing beats. I'm producing beats. But I'm trying to. I'm too busy to do beats now. In a way, I still try to get to it. But my sons are going to take over my legacy in that, in that mm -hmm. point of view. And that's the only reason I'm doing this too. You know what I mean? Because I want to pass something down to them. So if I could both build something off of this for artists to have a platform and give my son something that they can they can do as well, <clears throat> I'm all for it. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a family guy. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I definitely appreciate that. And I definitely that's the other thing because you and your wife, man, y'all a great team. Like, I don't yeah, think people really see y'all how I see it, but you guys yeah. really bust your ass. And she was she was. Perfect for that role in um, the shadows video. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Fun definitely fact work about that. Uh, fun fact. <laughs> yes, I did a video called Icy Hot, right, where I was rocking the cane gold, looking like MC Shan. So in the shadows, that's her imitating me. So she got the cane gold. She got the the boombox. Uh, like actually, in in the new video I did called Star Wars, I went back to that whole look. The, the boom box. The boom box is mad heavy. The boom box is probably like 80 pounds. Yo, I don't know. People, that's why people have muscles. Like, you know, that's why LL L Cool J had muscles back then. Because the radio was heavy. He ain't talk about how heavy the radio was. But, um, yeah, big shout to Stuck. Man, stuck, is up <laughs> stuck, stuck before. It was good. Um, but shit, Thanks. like, we, we're, 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 we're a good team. Um, I see that. Okay, it's, it's cool. Uh, I, me teaming up, I've always wanted her to rhyme, and she could rhyme, but it's not her thing. Like you know what I'm saying? Like okay, some 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 artists know they could do certain things, and some and most artists know okay, I could do this, but this is not something that I want the public to see. But if if I wrote her rhymes and she said them, I'm telling you, we could we could we could we could do some things, but like. Wow. It's all about like okay, what's what is timing? Is this the time for that? Like right now, you're trying to set up a platform for for my next album. I'm trying to um, act more, you know what I'm saying. So I'm trying to get into more like uh, drama. So um, you're gonna see a lot more people in the videos that are probably you might see them on TV shows pretty soon. I'm trying to I'm trying to up the ante with this, and and you're gonna be in my videos. I swear to you, you're gonna be up in there. <clears throat> but, um, I'm trying to build like 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 your, your your sons. I'm trying to build this dynasty, yo. I mean, the dynasty is here, but I want the dynasty to be seen more. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I want to, you know, be able to get more people exposure that are behind the scenes. You know, as opposed to being like in front of the camera. You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm trying to step this up. And we're going to have fun. We're going to have fun with it, yo. Like, like I told you before, too, brother, like, um, <clears throat> for those that really know me, know me, like, like you know me, and a lot of people really know me, y'all yeah. know that when I say I'm going to take niggas with me, I'm going to find a way. Mm. Tom Price is one of them. That's been my brother for mad long. And I told him, anywhere I go, he's going. You know what I mean? N-U-T. He's at U T. Decap. Any way I can bring people with me, I'm NUT, bring man. Big shout to NUT. Yeah, I was on his uh, radio show actually uh, back the same weekend that I seen you. Yep, I remember. Yeah. I, I was I was tuning in that night. I believe. Yeah, too. that was like, fun. We was freestyling and everything. NUT, man, he's dope. Yeah, that's word. what's up. That's how I say it. Like I, I try to bring everybody with me. The same goes with you. Like that's why Joe Fatal. Promote... Joe Fatal. Joe Fatal's in the building. Big shout. Peace. Main source. Like, any way I can, like, help people while I'm going to do it. That's like I said with you. Like, <clears throat> you want to tag me and get shit all day and all night? I'm all yeah. with it. You know what I mean? Like, I'm only doing that for fam, though. If, you know what I mean? If random niggas start tagging me, they shit, I'm, I'm ignoring that shit. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but yeah, for yeah, family, yeah, yeah. you can tag me and everything you fucking do. I'm going to push it. I'm going to push it like it's my own shit. That's, that, that's and that's what, what you need. need. You know what I'm saying? Like, you need more people to be able to, 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 to promote you. Like, okay, like... You know, I know I promote myself, 
but like I try to take most of my circle with me. So I'm I'm usually like if I'm promoting somebody, you know, they're doing something like something new. Okay, I throw them on my page. Like you know what I'm saying? Or like um if they if they're not graphic graphically gifted then i try to like draw them something so they could be able to advertise something like i hook people up i might charge but at the same time my 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 my, my prices aren't ridiculous you know i want to see everybody eat so you know try to and, and needless to say i'm a barber too so i'm always hook, hooking people up with something so you know like it always comes back to you though if you put that energy out there is going to come back to you twofold. And it's not like I'm looking for it. It's just that that's what I naturally do. And I've always been like that. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I just want to see, you know, people shine as, as, as well as I do. You know what I'm saying? And, and these, like you said, these are the people that you're going to remember when you on stage accepting those awards and giving your award speech. Whoa. And, yo, big shout out to such and such that stuck with me 20 years. You know, we was on the grind and, you know, now, now we're, you know, in like Hollywood Hills or whatever. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, it's a it's an uphill battle. So, you know what I'm saying? You just got to, you know, believe in yourself. That's the most important thing. Because it, it, you just got to stick to your word, man. That's the most important part. Word. If you say you're going to help somebody, you can support somebody, don't bullshit. You know what I mean? Just keep it fucking real. I mean, it takes literally 30 seconds just to fucking tag somebody. Or 30 seconds to, you know what I mean, to, to push something to somebody. I'm fucking lying. I couldn't understand this was the old days. Where yeah. you had to go to a nigga's crib, bring a whole book bag full of CDs and have them push it like that. Everything is at the fucking fingertip. You, mount, you fucking click the little mouse shit. Here you go. Here's my new track. Can you please push that? It really ain't that fucking difficult, yeah. man. Like, like that's, that shit is bullshit. I go out of my motherfucking like I'll be on my motherfucking job, bro. I'll pull over to the side and I'll start tagging people <laughs> or I'll start liking people's statuses and try to support why I can't at work. I, yeah. You know what I mean? This is the type of love and support everybody needs. Everybody needs to stop the bullshit. Man. Stop being on that, oh, boy, I'm going to look like a dick rider. And if you like it's something, that. you know what I'm saying? Why would you let someone deter you for the things you love? Like, fuck all that. Like, do what you want to do. You want to support the side, support it. You want to buy the album, buy the fucking album. What the hell is yeah, the it's Yeah, it's, it's available. Like, yo, dude, I mean, it's like... I got to remind myself of how many albums I've done already, like, you know, within the past, I guess, 10 to 12 years, like, you know, but needless to say, it's like, you know, the, the, the work is never finished, but at the same time, it's always fun to do because it's art, you know, you, you, if you're contributing to art and you stay flowing, then like, you know, it's like you when you make beats, so it's, it's like Large Professor when he makes beats, free thinking okay like you know it's second nature like with, with me and when i'm writing dude I, i'll be on the train like i still take the train you know what i'm saying I'm, i'll be on the f train and like you know I'm, I'm vibing to like a beat that someone sent me or i'm vibing to my own beats that i you know made here and there it's like i might come up with some lines write some lines i still write in a notebook you know it might look funny now but i still use my notebook like i remember um my man still from smith and wesson was like, yo, you know, I still write in notebooks, like the composition book, we shout to that because people write in their phones now, you know, everything's digital, but you know, it, it, it has an authentic, uh, it's, it's authentic when it comes to like being able to take a pen, write a rhyme, you know what I'm saying? Or like, you know, even when it comes to vinyl, like, you know, the DJs, you know, as opposed to just, you know, um, digital DJs, there's a difference between a digital DJ and a DJ that works with vinyl, you know, there's, it has a certain um, a touch, and feel, touch and feel to it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Look, I oh. never understood why, like, see, like, I, I can play some tunes and shit through the radio and shit like that. I'm never going to call myself a DJ. But I never understood why these button pushers are sitting here trying to call themselves a DJ just because it stands for disc jockey. So at the end of the day, <clears throat> you're not a disc jockey. So come up with your own name for the shit or whatever. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Definitely. Because, yo, carrying them crazy shit like that, I used to I used to feel for some of these DJs, bro. <laughs> hell yeah. Hell yeah. Yo, even at UT, this man was dragging a whole fucking coffin with the fucking turntables and the shit. Hell like, yeah. Bro, every fucking day. I'm like, bro, I don't know how you can do this. You lift shit, weights. Man. It's like crates and crates. Oh, gym time, weights, you know what I'm saying? It's like, word. So, yo, I mean, but... 
I'm saying this, you know, I'm only saying this just to say it's like, you know, you 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 find the fun in it, like you know, like like even doing videos, like I, I've done, like I shot like a few videos already. I'm trying to, um, you know, just be more productive when it comes to that, but it ain't cheap. You know what I mean? Like you know, you want somebody to do your editing, it ain't cheap, but you want yeah, the best out of it because you want you know to to make the best impression. Like you know what I'm saying? Like I don't like I don't want my videos to look like anybody else's videos that people seen like a thousand times already you know because you you could you could get into an area of being generic i'm not trying to be generic i'm trying to you know i'm trying to be a leader you know what i'm saying like it, they say um they say uh leaders uh, are the best followers that's 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 true but you don't want to stay being a follower you want to be a leader at the end of the day so you know when even when heads do their videos it's like you kind of seeing the same thing over and over again, like has throwing money in the air and having cars they don't really own and being in renting out mansions that they don't really own. But it looks like it's their crib. Like, come on, all the whole facade is it's changed now. Like we just talked about that like 20 minutes ago on how everything being exposed and the, the love of hip hop look ain't really real. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, but like it, everything comes at a price. So like me doing videos or like, you know, even whenever you decide to do videos, everything costs money, man. So, you know, you got to continually have that hustle, like, you know, like have that second job. Like, like I said, I cut hair on the side that gives me money to be able to fund studio time. Like cause studios ain't cheap. Nobody's inviting me to their studio and being like, yo, this is a free session. Like I've had that, haven't had that for years. You know, so, you know, and it, you get the money where you can. Like, even when, um, like, before COVID, I was going overseas performing in Paris and in and, and, and Brazil and Brussels, different spots, getting paid overseas money. That that goes a long way. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, even to say that is dope because hip hop is paying my way, you know, so so it doesn't. <clears throat> Doing hip hop, doing this rap thing, it doesn't go in vain because it, it still comes back to you, you know, one 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 form or another. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> Very much. I mean, yeah. that that that, that it keeps our asses out of trouble. So I mean, yeah, 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 <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? It, hip hop is a lifesaver on some other shit. Pretty sure, you know what I mean? So a lot it's a of good people, thing to do. A lot of people. I mean, cause my 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 philosophy has always been. If you if you if you can put one smile on one person's face, you did your job. So that's all. Yeah. You know what I mean, for me, the lesser is the greater. You know what I mean? Like that, right. that's that's right. how I live my life. So anything that comes from my shows, hip hop in general, it's a fucking blessing. You know what I mean? Getting to meet artists such as yourself because we can't link up and and chill and hang out like we want to, but it gives me an opportunity to yeah. chop it up. You know what I mean? Chop it up with my peoples, build. And just enjoy the fucking night. <clears throat> I mean, yo, you know what I mean? With, with, yo, with that being said, man, um, since, like, we got a few heads in the building that, you know, are my peoples, and, and they got they got sons that, you know, rhyme, and, like, you got, you got sons that do beats, you know what I'm saying, passing the torch off. It's like, I want to give a shout-out to the second generation of the first-generation hip-hoppers, because... I guess we could consider ourselves like the first generation and like heads that are maybe 10 years, 15 years older than us. Cause hip hop started in 1973 or whatever. Um, and has born in the eighties, has born in the nineties and has born like in the 2000 era. Like those are different generations of heads. So, you know, it's, it's cool to be able to pass the gems off to, to the next generation, but the right way. You know what I'm saying? So so I, I big up like my man Joe Fatal, you know what I'm saying? His son doing his thing when it comes to like, you know, the music and like, you know, you just like continually, you know, passing it on. Like, yo, you, you my man, um, Supreme. It's like, you know, you you did you teach your sons how to do beats or they just picked it up? Um <clears throat> Yeah, definitely definitely taught them, but more so I think they learned through observing. You got them through whatever. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, nah, I definitely taught them everything I know, and I'm be fucking real honest with you. I, I feel like they're they're better producers than me. You know, I mean, I'm, I, 
I feel like I did that well of a job that I can fucking, I can just kick back because their style is so similar to mine. It's like they all, it's like they just grabbed it right from me and just took it. But that, that might, <laughs> that, that gotta be a dope feeling though for, for a father to be able to look at, you know, someone that he brought into the world being able to practice that craft and know that, you know, they're gonna take it to that next level. Like, cause we ain't gonna be here forever. You know what I'm saying? So, if you if you teach the force like it's a Luke Skywalker thing, you teach the force to you know the next generation. It's like we could be dead and gone, but we ain't got to worry about like you know it going like you know um, deterring from where it's supposed to go. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, you you you've done your you done you done your part as far as hip hop is concerned. <coughs> yeah, I mean, you know, so. <coughs> I ha I had to because. <clears throat> like I said, hip hop kept my ass alive, kept my ass out of trouble. So, yeah. <clears throat> in turn, with that pride and knowledge, I felt like having my sons be involved in what I do, hip hop as well, in general, is <clears throat> could keep them out of a lot of trouble. Yeah, you know what I mean for future for the future because it's giving them an outlet to express themselves, to giving them an outlet to keep them off the streets and doing dumb shit. Yeah. So. At the end of the day, I was going to teach it. I taught, even before they were doing the beats, I taught them how to break dance and shit. You know what I'm saying? So I always kept my kids in the hip hop loop. You know what I mean? Old albums, et cetera. So it was natural for me to want to pass on the whole beat process. You know what I mean? Because it definitely yeah, yeah. kept me out of trouble. So that's yeah. what I feel like a lot of parents should do, man. Like, I understand a lot of people ain't doing shit the same way they used to. But you know what I mean? If you still got it in you, why not pass down that gem? You know right. what I'm saying? Maybe we won't right. have so many fucking little Nazis and shit. If more of us real hip-hop heads was passing down the shit to our kids the, the, the way we should be. Mm -hmm. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Get, yeah, get I agree. Get rid of that whole bullshit era. You know what I'm saying? But um, it is what it is. It is what it is. We fighting back, though. We fighting the good fight, man. Like, I feel like we kind of, we went in in ways we couldn't thought possible against the industry. And I'm, yeah. I'm very proud of, of us as a community, as a culture for hip hop, because we've been through a lot. You know what I mean? I don't think people really, for those that are not MCs, DJs, producers, they wouldn't understand the real motherfucking struggle, the sacrificing, the, the days with no sleep. Like, there's just a whole bunch of shit. And honestly, right. I think people would know more about that for these type of shows, like what I do, to better have people see what you do behind the mm -hmm. scenes, such as a barber, such as, you know what I'm saying, everything you do. Because everything you do honestly contributes back into hip-hop. Yeah, so it's it like, has, a, has its own, um, it revolves around hip-hop, basically. Like, I mean, dude, I've, not to call out my age, but, yo, I was born in, I was born in 73. So, you know, when hip-hop was born, that was, what, 73, and, uh, they say in August or something like that? When um when the party you know was thrown and it was official the house party, but you know I was born around the same time so it's like it's in me already so it's it's just something that I can't deter from, you know so I got a I got a friend um like every time I I, I get around him he'd be like yo you that rapping motherfucker yo, because. <laughs> <laughs> he he like yo you on rapping motherfucker cuz you know why because um the thing is uh, i see all my mc's jedis you know what i'm saying so so when i get around a fellow jedi i could just be meeting you and if i if i if i find out you, you rhyme i'm going to be like yo so let me get an eight bar you know what i'm saying it's like yeah, <laughs> cuz cuz it's just natural and we mm -hmm. we start to cipher up you know what i'm saying for like 5 minutes but like everybody ain't on that type of like time. So, you know, you do run into heads, it's like, yo, you white? Right? Like, but nah, it's just it's just the hip hop in me, son. You know, I'ma test out your bars, yo. You know what I'm saying? It's like sparring. Like if if you got like, you know, boxes that run each other in the street, you know what I'm saying? You think they ain't gonna slap box, but you know, it's just it's just like a certain language that you speak. And that's that's what it is, you know. Exactly. You run into too <laughs> deep, you, you think that. they ain't gonna talk about old music? Like, yo, you got this James Brown, you got this James Brown record? Like, you don't know this James Brown record or this, you know, Al Green record, then you ain't even real DJ. Like, that's DJ talk. So that's like, that's MC yep. talk right there. Exactly, yo. And that's why, like, at the end of the day, man, like, <laughs> we, just, we need a stronger foundation for 
shit. Like, you know, there's yeah. too much, too many people getting hurt over silly shit. It's not like, it's like not contributing to hip hop in any positive form. It's all bullshit. So it's like, we need, we need that change, man. <clears throat> we need to, <clears throat> we need to just, I don't know, man. I don't even know what to do at this point. <clears throat> I do feel like KRS wanted to bring it back some of our legends to pump out shit still. I, mm -hmm. I do feel like that is contributing to, to, to hip hop on the better side. So it's like we yeah. need more of that. Like another koozie rap album, like you said, or like no, I mean a Rock Kim album. Like these type of things I think could also re evolve hip hop from what it was. I'm still listening you know I mean? to albums. Like I'm still listening to the DMX exactly. album. He dropped an album mm -hmm. before he passed away, rest in peace to him. I'm still listening to Black Rob, rest in peace to him. I'm still listening to um, The Locks Had Dropped an Album. The album is crazy. Even before the whole Versus thing, they came out with an album. So, you know, it's 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 still there. Like, you know, it's just you got to tap into where it's at. And once you do that, then you'll be good. You know, like, yeah. I'm, I'm I'm still looking forward to, you know, music from Mike Geronimo. You know, I never I never worked with Mike Geronimo, nor have I worked with Royal Flesh yet. So, you know, these are the dudes that I'm trying to work with. You know what I'm saying? No matter how long it takes, like you know, they they every time I see them on drink champs, I'm like, yo, yeah, we gotta work together. <laughs> you know? yo, shout, shout out to Fan Royal Flush, word, yo. <laughs> Royal Flush, big shout out to Noriega. You know, saying Capone and Noriega from champs. Left Rack. You know, yo, I'm I'm so glad they got that opportunity, man, because yo, yeah, Ori definitely brought a lot of shit together, man, between the reggaeton and hip hop, the hip hop in general. Like, yeah. he, he does a lot. So, it's like, I'm glad to see artists such as him that's real hip-hop mm -hmm. get a chance, an opportunity to bring on other hip-hop. So, yeah, that shit exactly. is awesome. Word. So, I mean, we got a lot of that stuff, man. I mean, you should, <clears throat> honestly, you should do some shit like that. You should do that shit, some fucking, like, lifestyles at the barber and some shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> fucking, just just, just give, a, give a little reality show type shit, but... I real. can do it. Yeah. <laughs> real. You know what I mean? No motherfucking clapping in the background. And <laughs> <laughs> man, boy, right? You know what I'm saying? But honestly, I always thought that, man. I'm like, yo, they they got these ink crews and this, 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 and that. Is there like is there a barbershop show? Because I don't see nothing. There used to be. There used, there used to be a show. Um, I don't know if you remember. Uh, they had a show back in the days, probably like 10 years ago. I think it was called, uh, it was called The Shop. You know what's funny? Mm. It was it was shot on Farmers Boulevard, I believe. Um, and in the intro, they showed a mural that I painted on Parsons and Archer. That that uh, is like a is a mural for Jam Master J, Biggie Smalls, Tupac, and and Freaky Top. Um, I forgot the name of the show, but they it was like a reality show in a barbershop. Um, Fat Joe. Was oh, hold, a, hold on, re re let's rewind real quick. I just want to clarify. Wait, did you say you did? Murals? Yeah, I do murals too. I did a mural, uh uh one of the most famous murals I did um is on Parsons and Archer, uh last stop on the E train and the J train and in Jamaica Queens, uh around the corner from the uh multiplex theater um on the Long Island side. There's a, a mural where you see uh Jam Master J because I did that um uh when he first passed away, when he got killed, um, mm -hmm. shortly after, what was it, uh, Halloween 2003? Yeah, around that time. So, um, Jam Master J, uh, Biggie Smalls, Tupac, and, um, and, uh, Freaky Top. They've added, uh, this wasn't done by me, but they added Obama there and, um, uh, a couple of other people, but um, I'm the originator of the uh, of the mural over there. So, you know what I'm saying? Like oh, that's crazy. Wow, <clears throat> I didn't like, know that. That's people stop videos over there too. Probably don't even know that. But you know, a fun fact of that yeah. is my name. I put my name in Tupac's bandana. So if you Yo, if you so really yeah. look, it says Hassan H A S A N in his bandana. Yo, you gonna I'm have me investigated now, nigga? Cause that shit is crazy. Like I did, you know, that's crazy. And you're right. Yeah, that's why it's, it's crazy. Cause I, I bet around. people don't even know you might have done it. And honestly, all these murals people are standing in front of taking photos. The fact yeah. that you're the one that made that must be the fucking greatest feeling ever, yo. It's I a good feeling, you know. It's it's an even greater feeling because it's still there. 
Like I painted that in 2004. And we in 2022, and and hasn't been vandalized or nothing. So you that's know, to, to it's and people always pass it because that's like a main, that's like that's like Archer Avenue. Like you know, mad buses go up and down. So that that mural is seen by like millions and millions of people on a daily basis. So you know, a person would never really be able to guess who done it because my name isn't big on top of the mural, but it's inside the mural. You know what I'm saying? I, I've done like murals overseas too. Like when I was in the military, um, I did a couple of uh, murals in Korea. Actually, when they found out that um, when a person finds out that you're an artist, you're gonna start doing some work. Now I wasn't commissioned doing it, but they had me do a couple of murals in some of them warehouses that you know you ain't gonna be able to see because it's on a military base, but it's still there. So that was my, I guess, practice until I got to Queens and was able to do something official on the street. You know what I'm saying? And then that's not the only mural I'll probably be doing. Like, I want to do more in the future. It's just that it's not easy to just be able to pick where you want to, you know, get it done. And, you know, it's, there's licenses involved and stuff like that. But I'm definitely proud of that mural, though. Yeah, that's that's crazy, man. Like, <clears throat> that's, a, that's, a, that's a beautiful thing, man, to be able to... <laughs> To do that shit like that's a cool thing the cool that's a that's a cool thing about you know a, a person that doesn't always brag about the things that you know they've done or you know what I'm saying like mm -hmm. see this see that yeah I did it I used to be like that in high school until I realized that you know you you um you have a bigger impact when people um notice what you do without you telling them you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. because wow. it's it's always been there so, you know, I don't have to carry it on my shoulder all the time, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm continually doing something for the future. So it's like I don't get caught up in talking about, like, who I know or what I've done. Although I'll let you know on my resume. My resume is pretty dope. But, you know, right. I'm not a braggadocious type of person outside the, the, the rhyme ele element. You know, I, I brag in a rhyme. Yeah, you let, but, you, you, let your, you, <laughs> you let your craft speak for itself a bit at the end of the day. Yeah. So, I mean, <clears throat> like, you, you, you can't. You can't even be an artist if what you're doing is touching people certain ways, like you know what I mean, or or giving yeah. people feelings without having to tell them what to feel, or without mm -hmm. having to tell them who you are and shit like that. They should they should seek it out. That's also like I said before. Like I feel like uh, we dumbing it down because man, when we used to, we didn't have YouTube and shit, we would be searching all over the internet for artists or or doing this yeah. this and that or. Or, or like hacking people's shit just so we can listen to the song. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, yeah, yeah. I'm from, it's crazy. I'm, I'm from those from. days. I'm from the days where heads used to be like staying up to one or two, three in the morning listening to Bobito because you know Bobito and Stretch Armstrong trying to find out you know what's gonna be the hottest song the next week, the the next month. You know what I'm saying? Now you do, all you got to do is just like go to YouTube now. Like it's it's a whole different era. Yeah. But the the fun of it, you know, was just like searching for it, knowing that you know you're gonna be blessed with something new all the time, and all the styles mm -hmm. were different. You know, there exactly. wasn't one style. I mean, you know, you had cellar dwellers, you had Onyx, you had Mob Deep. You know, you you had groups like the the Rumple Tilskins, like you had groups, main source, like I said before, you got like, you know, EPMD, you know, like the, and those are just groups. I'm not even talking about the MCs. So you had different styles back in the days. Like now it's like, you know, you have like the same style over and over again. So that's yeah. why it's like, we have MCs like me and, you know, heads out there that's trying to like, you know, stay as original as possible. Cause we, we come from that era. We come from that time. And the most messed up thing about it is like when you get to like the point where you living in the 2000s, you were born in like the 1980s or 70s, has talk about, yeah, you know, back in the 1900s, things were different. Like, we're not that old. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> the kids, the kids I mean, nowadays talk about the 1900s. Like, come on, man, get out of here. I mean, it is still a little tough to, to fucking have to show your son a, a tape and it's like, what the fuck is this? Or be like, yo, check out this CD. Man. <laughs> yeah, it's like ancient, that, like ancient to them. It's a fucking pizza cutter. Like, what is that? <laughs> I can't listen to pizza guy, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, everything, pizza everything cutter. is weird now. You know what I'm saying? Everything is fucking weird. But at the end of the day, it's like, shit, man. Like, we progressing as artists. We progressing with our quality. We're 
Yeah. Progressing with technology. Everything is way easier than that used to be. So man, like, you talking about can- like it has going to has going to like out of space for five minutes, man. You know, your what's the name? Jason's or uh, what's the name? Uh Captain Kirk just went to, to space for five minutes. Say so do if you have millions of dollars you could you could do just basically anything you want now. So yeah, everybody's futuristic and you know, has is trying to find like what's going on on the dark side of the moon right about now. You know, they, they, we got the Space Force. Like, dude, there's so many things out there, man. I'm, I'm like, okay, probably UFOs are real and all that type of things that, you know, conspiracy theories are basically, you know, the realest stuff that you could probably believe in. But, you know, with that being said, it's like, you know, <clears throat> just take everything with a grain of salt, like, you know, like my, my parents used to tell me back in the days. Yo, let's, let's, keep, let's, let's put this out there for the record, though. <laughs> because it's kind of crazy. It's crazy because all them niggas they used to talk about the conspiracy theor- theorists and shit. Yeah, we all crazy and all. Y'all don't know what y'all talking about. All that shit is out in the open now. It's like who's the dummy now? You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Because at the end of the day, we the ones like yo, this motherfucking UFOs and this is and that. It's like and now it's shit is all out there. It's like but they've been talking about of- that. They they've been talking about that, and people was like, nah, come on, look. Yo, it, look at the fact that you got, okay, movies like Close Encounters of the Third Kind back in the days, all the information that they was trying to show you about, like, you know, UFOs and aliens in the movies. And now mm-hmm. they they got, like, uh, like, national meetings about, like, you know, stuff that was found from the 1950s and the 1960s with Area 51 and this, that, and the other. That's really true. So, you know, this this stuff about the pyramids that's still coming out. Like so I mean that that might be a deeper discussion for another time, but all these things are being exposed. So who's to say that ain't tr- it's it's true or not true? Yeah, pretty much. Well, all I know is the conspiracy theorists MCs out there. <laughs> yeah, we, we need to we need to shake their hand because niggas like a moral technique really set the tone when it came to breaking shit down and yeah. People thought he was crazy and he was an eccentric or whatever because of his beliefs and how he broke shit down. Now, look, this man was right almost about every single thing this man ever talked about, even when he was in the middle of Harlem or whatever, giving discussions. So this is just mm-hmm. a prime example that hip-hop is powerful, man, especially if you know how to use it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? We're we using it for the good. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't, I don't need no chicks around me butt naked. I don't need no money dropping from the sky, man. I'm cool with just having whatever amount of viewers watching us. You being able to lace my tracks, like, all these shits is fucking blessings. I don't need no more fucking money, yo. Like, money is something you can burn. Like, you can't burn family. You know what I mean? Exactly, exactly. And I just so, want to expand from here, you know? I, I want to be able to work with, you know, artists that I've always looked up to back in the days, you know? And before his passed away, because there's so many, so many, you know, MCs, you know, along with, like, Hollywood, you know, stars and stuff like that that is just passing away, you know? You just want to cherish this moment and work with the people that, you know, you grew up with or you look up to, you know, someone that, you know, is 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 dear to your heart. You know, you grew up on their rhymes or whatever, whatever. You know, do the things now. Like even if you try, you you doing beats like this. I'm pretty sure there's people, there's MCs out there you still want to work with. You know what I'm saying? You gotta like do these things now before something happens. Like you know, another version of COVID, another you know virus comes out, or you know someone just like gets into a car accident. Like there's there's so many things. So your head's getting shot. Like 200 people getting shot in New York every day. So, you know, like I, I, I said, it's, you just got to do these things now and, and capitalize on the moment, you know? I used to um, procrastinate back in the days, you know, just thinking that I had, like, you know, more time. And the more you think that you have more time, the less time you have. So, you, you know, you just got to, like I said, you just got to capitalize on the moment and, you know, just do the work. Do as much work as you can. Don't overexert yourself, you know, because people, you know, work so hard they they start like passing out for the fun man you know the wolf for the fun everything else will come along with it yeah exactly if if you're miserable doing it you're not gonna want to continue doing it and you're not gonna give your 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 entirety of yourself if you're not having fun you're only gonna give a half of yourself and it defeats the purpose because this this is a purpose you're supposed to you're supposed to handle things a certain way so at the end of the day 
gotta be full hard with this shit. <clears throat> Especially yeah, exactly. Pop, cause it's, so, no doubt. But yo, uh, I don't want to hold you up too much longer, but yo, before we before we uh dip out of here, yo, I want I want you to lay some bars real quick, yo. Okay. How many how many how many verses you want to hear? <laughs> yo, you can drop whatever you feel like you want to drop, brother, because it's Freestyle Friday. We getting it in. Hold up. I said there's 365 days in a year. There's a total of about seven days in a week. In America, there's no more ammonia in the ground beef. Genetic modification in the animal meat. Delivered to your doorstep courtesy of Uber Eats. People purchase the poison because the cost is cheap and wonder why we get disease. What's the cure for the cancer and the diabetes? Pharmaceutical industries is laughing straight to the bank. More, more robots made more jobs at stake. Human beings are the ones that are being replaced. Hollywood movies been given. Giving us clues, space forces exploring the dark side of the moon while on Earth we're living in a cocoon. Who's controlling the weather? Ask any weather man. Is it is it Mother Nature or the Heart Program? Something to think about. So let me let me let me take it to the gospel real quick. I spit the gospel, hostile, put you in a hospital, tubes up your mouth, tubes up your nostril, leading the apostles through the missions impossible, music in my molecules, make me unstoppable, venom in my veins, changing up my particles, watch what you say about my name in your articles, drunk after the bar, smoking a spliff behind the wheel of a car, about to drive off a cliff. I think your body's in the trunk, but I'm pleading the fifth. Gambinos are childish. Badass Joey's a stylist like Kendrick Lamar. Got your brains pickled in a jar. High style move in silence with the style move. The crowd with the bars. Even sports stars are getting stuck up for the sports cars. Pistol packing chicks packing heat between the cleavage and sports bras. Mouth full of caviar like you a rock star. I spit the gospel. Hostile. Your turn. Damn. Damn. <laughs> I, I wish I could rap like that, yo. <laughs> yo, that's your shit, man. I like that. See, that's what I'm saying, man. The way you, you fucking come correct on the mic, bro. Like, yeah, it don't matter what the fuck yo, you put you on, man. Let me let me kick something from uh, the dysfunctional family album called uh, Mixed Emotions. It's about wow. so it's a fictional song about a female that went wrong. Sweetest thing I ever known. Complexion color brown. Big body stacked, ass so fat you can see it from the front. Make the booty clap, titty silicone, no surgery marks. I'm looking all natural. Once a broke diva, eight cans of poop, eight cans of puppy chow. Seen her on the block, put her on the spot. She's still in denial cause she got a little guap. Get away with murder cause she's sucking off the cops. Goldilocks fetish for gold like Fort Knox. Diamond ice rocks. In high school, I brought, I made a dollar rings before the diamond rings. Sleeping with shirt kings in the Coliseum, men ain't never said a thing. But what goes around comes back and now, what goes around comes back and now again. Now she's, now she's sleeping in cars, strip teasing in, in bars, and she got rape scars that she can't camouflage. All yeah. right. All right, all right. <laughs> I, so, man, I, love, I love that story. That story style of hip hop too, man. It's just, no, I'm conceptual. I had to I had to do some conceptual shit. <laughs> nah, that shit was dope. I like that shit. That's what's up. <laughs> yeah. Nah, no doubt. I'm gonna yeah, be lacing man. your beast with some with some sort of some shit. So I'm telling you. Yo, I'm telling you. Two thousand twenty two is a little crazy. Two thousand twenty two is here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, <clears throat> you motherfucking going down, bro. You I got a show actually <clears throat> coming up too. Uh uh, I'll give you the details. It's um, it's in uh, I think Patchow, in uh, Long Island. Um, my people's uh, they got uh, they throw shows every year. It's uh, it's part of uh, damn the name slips from me right now. It's called uh, Vetstock. Every year they have a show called Vetstock for the veterans. Um, no matter what branch you're in, and uh, it's usually out in Long Island. So I'm gonna give you all the details in a minute. But um, check me at that show pretty soon. You know, as well as the other hostile shows coming up. No doubt, no doubt, no doubt. Man. I mean, we definitely, definitely gonna be. We, we, we good. show though, man. I appreciate you having me, man. You said this is all good uh, promotion, and um, I haven't spoke to you in a while, so you know, I'm pretty right. much 
definitely like pleased with like the whole vibe of the show. I was able to let my hair down, although I got a bald head, you know what I'm saying? But uh you already know what's up. Nah, definitely, man. Like I said, you you are you a good brother, man. I definitely I, I, I want to see the best happen for you. So any way I can help, like I'm all I'm all ears too. You know what I mean? Cause, right. Like I said, we, everybody deserves a chance, everybody deserves support. Everybody deserves, you know what I mean, et cetera, et cetera. So, I mean, you deserve that for all your work ethic. Everybody needs to pay some respect to you. <clears throat> Make sure they follow you, et cetera. Mm-hmm. And like I said, man, you can always tab me and everything, man. I mean, we, 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 so we're going to talk either way because we always talk on a regular basis type shit or whatever, whatever uh, the time or et cetera. But like I said, man, I'm here, man. And I definitely appreciate your time, bro, because, like, I know you, you got a lot going on <laughs> just as much as anybody at this point in time. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, all all of us artists really stay busy, you know, it's, and it's good to stay busy because you're constantly, your mind is going and you're, you know, going back and forth from different styles. So, yeah, it's just, it's just, that's how we do, you know, and I know you could relate because you do the same thing, you know, Yeah, yeah. and it's exactly. good to have a show like this to be able to, you know, uh, express yourself on a platform to, you know, let the masses see what you do. Yeah, exactly. I just want to, I want to give everybody a fair shot, you know what I mean? Because I'm, yeah. I'm not these other dudes that's going to sit here, hype you up, and then hit you with a bill. <laughs> right, right. You know what I mean? I'm not yeah, going to sit yeah. here and do this. This is now. I'm trying to bring everybody on because everybody deserves a chance. So, I mean, right, it's right. definitely, it's, it's fun doing it. I appreciate everybody that's on the show. A lot of good people, and I'm glad they turned out to be good people outside the MC and this shit. Because, like, that's me as a fan, that's what I like. So as you as as an artist, me as a fan, mm-hmm. the fact that you take your time to do this show and you take your time to, to reach out to people, that that's that's my my form of hip hop. Like that's what right, I'm right. I mean, so I appreciate it. Man. Appreciate you. Good nah, man, luck, man. We definitely we definitely gonna lace up this new year, though, man. We gonna we gonna tear it up, trust. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. But um, yo, why you tell everybody your uh, why you tell everybody your handles or whatnot, so this way they know how to reach out to you. Yeah, um, on Instagram, I'm Hostile Rhymes. I'm also uh, Hostile Art, if you want to look into the art aspect. Um, and I'm also ho- Hostile Haircuts NYC, if you want to check out the haircuts. Um, and Dysfunctional Family uh, on on um, IG. And uh, Twitter, I'm Hostile NYC. On Facebook, I'm Hostile Rhymes. So it's pretty consistent. And um, I have a website, uh, HostileRhymes.com. That's H-A-S-T-Y-L-E-R-H-Y-M-E-S.com. And they could check me out. <clears throat> videos, the most recent videos, videos dating back for a minute, as well as, you know, photos and any other good stuff. And you more also stuff make sure to come. You check so. out his, um, <clears throat> make sure you check out his joints on our YouTube and also um <clears throat> Spotify's got the, uh, the album on there. As well. Right, right. So, and that's um that's um Hostile Enterprise Knowledge Born. Yeah, definitely and also, out. like I said, uh <clears throat> new Star Wars album that just came out with DJ Views. So big shout to DJ Views. We got the album out right now and the video is on YouTube, Star Wars. E P coming up. Check it out. You'll love it. No doubt, no doubt. All the hip hop heads. You already know. <clears throat> but once again, definitely appreciate your time, though, bro. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get back to you after the show and shit. Okay, okay, no doubt. Yeah, send me the video when you get a chance, man. Thank you for everybody coming out, man. You know, so love. No doubt, no doubt. Appreciate you, bro. Right. I'll talk to you in a second, yo. All right, peace. All right, peace. <clears throat> All right. So yeah, that was. <laughs> That was a good brother right there, Hostile Rhymes, you know what I mean? Like, go check him out on all the social media joints and whatnot. Check out his videos on YouTube. <clears throat> um, Spotify's got an album. Um, I got a joint with him on his new album, I believe, featuring uh, Sadai X. And, um, yeah, he's a good brother, man. Definitely follow him as well, like, after the show. Um, tomorrow we got really your sparks well, man. And, yo... Know, that shit's going to be dope, man. So definitely make sure you got to tune in to that shit tomorrow, uh, 8.30. <clears throat> Once again, shout out to all the sponsors, of course. You know what I mean? Snow Goons, Lee Sound International, Creative Uses Music. You know what I'm saying? 
shout out to everybody that be tuning in, supporting the show, man. I really appreciate y'all. Like, I'm glad to be able to to do this with y'all twice a week, three times a week, whatever the amount, <laughs> because this this is fun, and you know, <clears throat> I'm glad that y'all appreciate what I do too. Anyways, um, yeah, once again, tune in tomorrow, um, uh, and appreciate y'all. Peace. <laughs>